Hey everybody, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. We are continuing with our mega dungeon crawl of the Halls of Arden Vool by Richard Barton using a heavily, heavily house-ruled version of the Old School Essentials by Gavin Norman. Going around the horn once again, I am your host for the evening. My name is John. I will be the referee. Mike will not be with us tonight. He is dead to us. He's on vacation, having a much better time than we are right now. Uh, False. But, but continuing around, we have... I'm David, and I'm playing Onweir, the illusionist. Very nice. Um, I am uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, Matt. I, I play the uh, light-hearted, uh, light-footed, uh, loose-lipped, uh, left hand of Lysion, Avaricios. Nice. And I'm Ted, and I am playing Mortis J. Gobliano, a noble and wise sort of goblin, doomed, doomed to the <laughs> Eternal company of these heathens, these hoodlums, these murder hobos. Oh, underground Too much? forever. <laughs> the question, the question of the day: Will they ever see sunlight well, again uh, and actually be able to separate from each other? <laughs> I need a break. Have some quiet time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that is, <laughs> that is a situation. Our, our party right now, which is um, all of our PCs, plus we have uh, we have four NPCs as well. We have Njal Oakhart, we have um, Tresty, we have Yost, and we have Samantha the Red, um, in addition, are all lugging around massive sacks full of coin. They've collected even more treasure of varying, uh, varying types of on their journey since they have collected that treasure and they're desperately trying to climb their way out of the halls of art and Vool so they can collect that sweet sweet xp and recuperate um so that they can make their way back in once again um it is the ninth of Lagarios. So it's about 1 30 p.m they have made significant headway and they are hoping beyond hope that this extremely large map which they cannot see but you guys can <laughs> Is hmm. leading we, leading we, outward. Over, can we see? <laughs> That's right. Uh, so well, let's we'll look at it when he goes to the bathroom, guys. Join join uh, me, viewers, over. as you gaze upon the vastness of this, <laughs> and you guys will know. Are they close? Oh, oh, I'll never, oh, I'll never yeah. tell. <laughs> is this, is this you telegraphing <laughs> danger again, John? Like, Remember how that door went north, guys? Guess what? <laughs> like, oh, uh, right. oh, right. I know, so, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's like a secret way to go right to the moaning guy <laughs> and then over to the feather house. Yeah, we got this. Okay. I mean, so the if we could thing... just find some pickaxes, we could just tunnel out of here at this point. Come on. We got, yeah, the, we the, got the dwarf. Can, can we just set the dwarf to tunneling now and see if he makes it by next week? <laughs> yeah, we'll come back later. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of the dwarf, Gorn was the one carrying the lantern. Um, that lantern is... Uh, Rare for lanterns. We, we rarely get to this point, but it's about to run out. We have no. two two more turns on the lantern, just so you're aware. I just need to know who is carrying it now that Gorn is not here. Um, okay, so... Nine prior, so I can carry it again if you'd like. Well, let's... Okay. So, Mort has a large sack, so his hands are occupied. Gorn's not here. Okay. Onwir, are you carrying a large sack or just well, a backpack? True. I am now, yeah, so... Okay, you've got a large sack. Um, so, congratulations on that. Um, I'm real proud we, of you. Yeah, because we picked it back up last session when we came back uh, to the aliens. And all four of the NPCs have large sacks. Is that right, John? Uh, no. Almost none of them do. Only Tresty has a large sack because the other three are carrying two-handed weapons, so they're they're basically um, holding against one shoulder while the other hand has a small sack. Small sack. See what I'm saying? Like Yost is having a two, yeah. has a two-handed sword, but he's just carrying it with one hand on his shoulder. Same uh -huh. thing. Same thing with yep. Samantha with her ransom with Man Weeper, and um, okay, and, but their uh, other hand is full of weapon. Correct. Yeah, and Nyal has a uh, a battle axe which he's carrying on one shoulder. Okay. Which I could uh, buy is if someone is wielding a pole arm or carrying a pole, is you could probably hang the lantern on that. Just that. Um, if you're short of hands or. All right. I, I don't want... Is this a joke about uh, Avaricious? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yes, it was. I totally. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's, uh. Are we in another hench I mean, I mean could we not? Uh, uh, could we get one with three hands and then we'll all e it will all equal out? <laughs> Avaricious, what's in your hand? You have a small bag? Uh, not a large one? 
All right, I, I don't want anybody to be scared. I'm going, I can't hear uh, David at all. So I'm just going to hang up and join right back. It'll take one second. Okay. Well, I should just you want be, to pause it, John? Or? Yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We have our sound issues fixed. Okay, awesome. so here's the, here's what we do. Have you've got one small sack with like I have, nothing in it? Just give it to oh. someone else, and you hey. can. Well, but, but okay, but but I mean, hold on. Why couldn't we just tie something to his nub? Serious question. Why? It's not as if he can't use his forearm, right? We could we could get some rope and just or some twine and just. That's and Kind of. Is that possible? Okay. That's fine. I could, I could, Actually, I, I like the idea of tying a torch like to his forearm so that <laughs> <laughs> burning fish. All, all I'm getting at is like if he if he has his elbow still, if we or for if he's cut above the elbow, it stands to reason that we could use that as a juncture and you could kind of go around like this, if you don't mind. That sounds super. No, no, awkward. no, no. I mean, I could. Yeah, but I think it makes more sense to just you, you. I mean, have your coin. Your your sack has like 99 coins in it. Just give it to somebody else <laughs> and carry the lantern. What he's it's trying fine. to say is your sack is a little diminutive, right? Like, oh, hey, you oh, know what? It's, <laughs> it's a party spring. I don't know. It's yours is, is lacking. Sack. It is the sack that I brought into this dungeon, and it is the sack that I will carry out of this dungeon. But if someone else wants to fondle my sack while we take this last few steps, oh, no yes. problem. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay. So, Gorn, uh, so I'm sorry, Avarisios is going to take over the lantern for now. Um, and no cool. one has any more spells left. I know that Avarisios used his last kill light ones last time. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have been basically what you've been doing since you were forced backwards from the edge of the chasm by the halflings. Yeah. Uh, you have decided to go your own way, but you uh, end up, ended up actually, uh, currently, you're actually basically following exactly Dalton's Darling's path. The way that they ended up going, um, the same way. Uh, Yost cannot help you here because he has not gone this way either. Um, but you, uh, through these dusty chambers, the dust has actually been disturbed by the um, tracks of Dalton's Darlings. And you've been actually been uh, very good about piecing together probably the sequence of events that occurred to them as they entered each room. The most recent one that you just left actually was a room that had uh, some sort of uh, dust creature of some sort that swirled up went uh, got sucked right down Gorn's throat and almost suffocated him um you can tell just by the uh scrum of disturbed dust that was in here already that it looks like Dalton's darlings probably faced a similar threat um they were chased they were whatever they exited the room before they were actually able to search that body um which you guys did actually um, before they were actually to loot their fellow henchman's body Cassandra which you guys did um and you right. found a um a unintelligible spell book uh, yeah, there's so much waiting in the wings uh, when you guys are actually able to memorize, read magic, and or find a sage, as you guys well know. Right. Uh, okay. So, for the nonce. Uh, the nonce, you say? Let's right. throw it to Owlbear for the viewers' viewing pleasure. Sorry, <laughs> podcast listeners. Uh, Have I... Um... Uh, did we refill the the lantern? I believe that uh, Gorand had uh, one more flask of oil. Would you like to do that? You um, well, I mean, we will refill it when it's almost empty. Yeah. I think um, I've got an oil flask. I don't know who else does. Okay, are you gonna wait? As long till as you, I think you have one. That's fine. You're gonna wait till it's actually out. Um, how how many turns do we estimate two. are left? Two turns. Two. Okay, when one when one turn is uh, left, we'll light a torch so we always have something, and then we'll turn okay. it out. Right. Okay, that, that sounds good. Okay. So you guys, if you look over an owlbear, um, this was the dust creatures room, right? Yep. Yep. Now, uh, to be to remind you guys um, where that occurred. 
Uh, sorry, give me one sec. What room was that? Right. A room of a certain number. <laughs> Moon over my ibis. Uh, yeah, you found a potion that had a mist in it, or like a vapor yes. of some sort there, right? I have it mm -hmm. noted that um, it was a potion of a swirling mist. Yeah. Unknown, oh, and... similar to gaseous farm question mark from desiccated yes. corpse in the dust devil room. So th that's the key thing. I, it was not Cassandra. That was in an earlier room. This was actually a desiccated corpse that was earlier. Don't forget that Gorn picked up a ring that was a gaudy gold signet ring, and it had um, uh, a smiling face on it as the signet. And then around that face was uh, inscribed the name Jasmine. Right. And this was not part of, this is an older corpse, much older. Um, right. Not, not part of Dalton's dar Darlings. Jasmine was not the name of the ghost's wife from our very first. No, no. I looked that up too. No, it yeah. wasn't. No. Nyima. Oh. Okay, no. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, like, stuff like that, like, uh, I would remind you, like, you know, when I say the name, I would be like, you remember that name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, not, hey, I'm not going to count on you to... Nine months ago? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's actually only been, like, two weeks, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what, like, one thing I, I've been noticing is that there have been, like, you know, uh, darlings dropping kind of in every room. Um, <laughs> it can't be too many left now. I mean, darling droppings, you know, everywhere. Um, uh, <laughs> yes. Yost, uh, you know, I, I'm uh, sorry to see so many of your former companions have uh, fallen by the wayside. How, how many were in your group? Can you tell? Like, I'm curious at this point, how many would be left? It seems pretty bad. Well, everyone we've seen who dropped were hirelings. Like I told you, Dotton was nefarious for sending his hirelings in to do all the dirty work. Um, but you can see the trail that he left behind of those poor saps who took coin for, uh, from us to hold torches. Mm. They're all dead now. Uh, assuming uh, he yeah. wasn't able to pick up anybody in the dungeon themselves, it would just be the core group minus me. So that would be Dalton and Helga and uh, Hel Heliogabalus, Isidore, and <laughs> Yvette. That, I, 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 I what do you crack up a little bit <laughs> when he says Heliogabalus. What are you laughing at? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful name, my That's friend. a great name. All the way, you would, be, wizard? you would love Heliogabalus. You could share many secrets together. Yeah. He's a man of the, the dark hearts. <laughs> oh, I see. I did but not trust know, him. Does he love gems? <laughs> <laughs> does he pick things up and put them down? <laughs> yes, he's a, he's a mysterious oh, man, a quiet man, but very powerful. Mm. I frankly was quite frightened of him, but he could bring mighty forces to bear. Does, mm. does he have a large sack, too? <laughs> does he ever? <laughs> oh, that's some oh, this is a, episode 22, everything goes off the rails. Oh, we're done, we're done. Listen, I don't know what you are laughing at. You asked me who, who was left in Dalton and Darlings. I told of, you the of course, names. Of course, of no, course. You're, you're uh, very, very kind to do this. Does this kind of make sense with the number of tracks that we see, or is it difficult to tell? Yes, I think so. Okay. It looks right. about right. <laughs> So five members, five members left. Do you want me to say the names again? Uh, <laughs> Please. Hippopotamus. <laughs> Hi Hippopotamus. I can see they're not taking notes, so you don't think it matters, but that's okay. That's cool. <laughs> oh, no, you can see the note tab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anyways, my God. Uh, right, okay, so right. the room that you uh, – so you left that, that dust creature room yes. in, through a door in the northwest. Oh, um, also, a reminder, too, of an avenue that you did not explore. There was very strange, ornate bronze doors, double doors to the south end of that room. Yes. Right? Um, and you saw Which... that the, tr the tracks were not, they never went to that door. So you just decided to skip. Yeah. It. And you went through the, um, you were also kind of, on a lot of under a lot of pressure with the dust monsters. Sure. So you were like spraying water, blah, blah, blah. So um, uh, you went a to note the. On that, guys, if I could say, when we entered the next room and see that the dwarf, the dwarf, the door heads north. <laughs> I'm now starting to regret that we didn't try the double bronze doors. Right. Which so the, south. So let's explain the room that you're in right now because we left yeah. the session right when you walked in. It's a much smaller yeah. room. It's about um, it's 20, 20 foot by 20 foot square. Um, it looks like it hasn't right. been disturbed except for Dalton's Darling. So there is a clear pathway that runs um, around the obstacles that are in the middle of the room out through the northern door. So there seems to be only one door directly in the center of the northern wall. In the middle of the room... Um, there is a wooden desk and chair, uh, uh, very plain, except for the fact that both of them gleam with a gold leaf veneer over them. They look extremely fragile. 
and mm. there's it looks like the pat the tracks basically are chaotic and give the chair and desk a wide berth and go straight to the northern door as if like they were running right like they were moving quickly that makes right sense. That makes sense. didn't stop to look around there's no evidence that the footprints suggest that one of them stopped was eaten and the rest of them ran no they all it, uh, yeah it, it's it's a little bit tough to tell because it is very very chaotic but according but to you like just like that, that looks about like the right number of people yeah yeah, yeah. Well, okay well naturally i'm going to pick a pebble up off the ground and throw it over at the desk <laughs> pick uh, what a pebble off the ground and oh okay toss it at the desk I think you said an apple. I thought, where the hell? Okay. So, look in your pouch. <laughs> I've got a nice golden apple, but I'm not throwing it. Oh, the and desk. the walls here are all decorated with brilliant frescoes of Thoth, but it's very difficult to kind of tell, other than the fact that it does have some sort of um, Thothian importance, exactly what the function of the room is. When you right. throw the pebble on where and um, it hits the desk, the desk basically uh, it hits it, and then for a second it shakes, and then it goes poof, and it collapses into a pile of dust that causes the rest of the dust to float up and as that dust sort of settles you see glinting in the air little light flakes of gold veneer just sort of whoosh, and they kind of settle on the ground in that heap of now of like wooden dust that's combined with the dust of the ages and they just sort of lay on top these little flakes of gold the chair still stands. if we had time we could recover that gold leaf i don't think we've got time i i personally do not feel like i have time yeah. Can I ask one? Oh, right. Sorry to... <laughs> Those of you just tuning in, <laughs> Everisius is not well. Yes, I, yes, I yes. do not feel good. I do not look good. It would Some take of you... my lungs are in my hands. You, you have a feeling it would take you probably a turn to safely collect that gold leaf, but you have to tell me how exactly you, you plan to store it without it being, you know, just crumpled up and destroyed. I think we should go. To... Yeah, I think we should. We should either keep going or we should go back and try those bronze doors. Well, what I want to ask about the prior prior room, just for clarification, sorry if I missed Yeah, it. There are bronze doors to the south. On the map, you have a red notch at the north as if there's another door there. Is that just an errant mark? I oh, don't no, those... Think I uh, no, there, that's where the bronze or brass uh, halberd was sitting. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. okay. That's right. Cool. You found that halberd there, yeah. Which uh, um, <laughs> Goran is carrying, apparently. Um. You know, my, uh, not that anything should be trusted here. I imagine a couple of double doors uh, uh, in a decorative temple like this probably lead through a main egress. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm willing to follow you guys since you played the last session. Where you want to go. I mean, because basically we, we, we ran through the room, doused the dust devil, ran into this room, threw a rocket, excuse me, threw a rocket at the desk. Part. And that's where we are. That's where we are. Can I, can I walk over to the chair and kind of lean on it and see? Well, what I think we should do. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so what? My point is that yeah. we may still have time uh, sure. to run back if that dust devil is not actually destroyed with our water. We might have time to go back and uh, and avoid and check encountering out if we do it right now. And I, I kind of think we should. Sure, why not? Just to open them up and look. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Okay, so you're gonna go back. Um, who, who peers through the door fast. first? I'll, I'll, Mort will open the door. It's my idea. I'll open the door. If the, if the, the thing appears to be forming, forget it. So Mort, I'll hold you, the lantern right behind him so we can see well. Yeah. Mort, you open the door, um, and behind you, you can see that there are still some uh, piles of dust everywhere, but more prevalent now are actually like a, like a darker patched colors of thick like mud, right? Um, from where you guys were spraying your water skins and stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, the room is completely quiet. All you really see now is just these mounds of dark mud and um, uh -huh. and the body of the of the uh, ancient person that you looted. No, I threw that in the chasm. Oh, yeah, that's right. You threw that in the chasm. <laughs> I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah, you totally did. So it's like an, it's <laughs> in an empty a moment room. of uh, extreme callousness, I apologize, but there, yeah. it happened. There's a smell of mustiness, obviously, from the moisture. Um, All right. But if it. Mort steps into the room, does anything start to change? No. Poor baby. All right. Why don't I just go try the door, guys? Yeah, just truck it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll hustle over to the door and see if it opens. All right. So they are bronze double doors. Um, they don't have any markings on them. Um, when you attempt them, you can see that you you get a <laughs> locked. Locked. We have an iron key. Uh, who's got the I iron key? Uh, do I have an iron key? Wait a minute. So I think it is you. Uh, I'm looking. 
Uh, hold on, hold on. I have a bronze, a bronze key. I found it work. near the near the room of stars uh, on the exit from uh, in our jailbreak. You know, the room with the big kind of archway of stars. Um, right. There were two dead guys there. Um, oh, the iron yeah, key I, I'm thinking of is from a different Dungeons and Dragons game. Okay. <laughs> you are, but but I actually do have a key. I have a bronze key. Yeah, that's right. And, okay, you got a bronze key this time. Let's try it. Uh, I I hold the key up to the. Is there a keyhole? Uh, there is. Yes. Um. Does it look like my key would fit? You uh. Maybe. Maybe John is not sure. <laughs> it, it's like you, okay. you. You don't know. Like it, okay, it, well, it appears like it would fit. In, like it, if it's like a cross shape or something. Oh, weird, oh no, okay. no, yeah, no. It looks like a. It would fit into that keyhole. Yeah, yeah. Does it make sense to look through the keyhole before you do so? Just see if you see anything on the other side. Check it out. Uh, sure. uh, if it's possible. Who, who who is closest to death before it should put their eye? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a that's a close race. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm probably going to die anyway. I'll look, I'll look to the people. I look. You don't see anything through the people. It's just darkness. Dark. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Try it. If it doesn't I, okay. work, fine. Okay. We leave. Okay. I take the, I take out my uh, I take out my work. bronze key. Oh, it doesn't work. It does not work, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, work. Can um, someone knock it, on the door? It's a right-handed key. Hold on. Uh. So is this a locked door or a stuck door, John? It's a locked door. You do not have the correct key. But you've got a crowbar, right, Matt? Uh, I do. I do have a crowbar. Mighty Mort, who is the shortest little buffed, ripped-out goblin you'll ever see, mm -hmm. uh, takes that crowbar, cracks his little knuckles, <laughs> does the neck thing, and he's going to try and pry the door open with the crowbar. Wait, is there, it, did we notice? What's is there anything on the door, John? Like a, a freeze or anything? Like showing? No, it's, it's actually unmarked. Death or... It's, it's unmarked, oh, okay. but it's just strange that it's bronze. Most of the other doors you've seen are wooden, and most of them are single doors. This is a set of double doors. Yeah, it, it's either instant death on the other side, or it's the way out. I'm I'm voting way out. Who wants me does, to open it? Does Do it. does bronze have any kind of significance for like? Um, Religious significance or anything that we've seen? I don't. Not that you're aware of. It's just like this is where you store the bronze doors in general. I, I'm to... gonna, I'm gonna get my holy symbol out and ready to turn yes. just in case something pops Art. up and goes ooga booga. Right, Art. gotcha. Oh, not the ooga booga. <laughs> uh, ooga boogas are bad. You don't want those. <laughs> okay, John, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna crowbar this thing. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna want you to. Let's see. Roll a d6. Let me think. Um, that I have failed. Oh, never roll dice. Yeah, I have a four and six chance of opening a stuck door. So four and six for a stuck door. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a one and six. These are heavy, heavy bronze doors. Very locked doors. Okay. Yeah. Can I? Come on, this, may, maybe, this may be a reach. Ooh, are there hinges right. on this side? What? This might be a reach. Are there hinges on this side of the door? Uh, my... Let's see here. I feel like they do open into this room, but I don't know. Let me zoom in on Ted's drawing and see. The drawing is definitely the definitive. I'm assuming source. we'd be locked in, not loud. But yeah, yeah. I'm curious where the hinges are, if it says. They are, um, let's see. Uh, if the doors, if, if the doors open forward, like if they go in, I don't know where the hinges would be then. I think if they, they would be on the other side. If they open into the room we're in, the hinges are probably on the other side. No, the doors, if they you, open, you, you would push the doors. Then outward. the hinges are probably on our side. Okay. The hinges on the side that they open into, typically on a door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's got a pivot or the door stop. Oh, no. So that's, I've got it backwards then. Yeah. Right. So, right. so, so the, 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 the room we're in, the hinges are on our side. No, it's the other way around. Other way around. Okay. It's fine. All right. Okay. Good luck. I'm going to crowbar. Okay. Here we go. Oh, oh I nice, nice. destroys the bronze doors and saves the party. Yeah. <laughs> that may be the only good roll we've had in 20 <laughs> sessions. You say, you say good. You say good. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it may, in fact, actually be our doom. Let's find out. All That's right. Wild. Excellent. I, I did not expect that. Wow. Nope. All right. Um, I hand Avaricius his crowbar back and I. <laughs> All right, so, so it's like, like you, goblin, so right goblin here. <laughs> you just see like, and uh, Mort's, Mort's a strong goblin, like he's pretty ripped, yeah. but you see like oh, yeah. all the cords and veins of his muscle, you know, his arms just like straight, he's just like, and um, 
you don't expect it to happen, but lo and behold, just just crack and he like just pries that thing open um and it pops open um uh, just like the smallest amount like you basically you bend that lock mechanism right that whole thing just is like just crunches with metal and um, yeah. and then it just with the force that you're applying to it it, it like slowly actually wow. actually i think what probably happened is you would you would destroy the locking mechanism which would allow you to then push the doors in you know but it right, was, like, right, right, but right. they're very heavy and as you push them in what do you think of that yost a eh? uh-huh <laughs> uh now you can see as so the doors were like completely flushed to the ground and had no um visible seam between where they where they met and you know and, like Ooh. other doors i've actually told you like where sometimes you sense or feel something coming from underneath or something like that uh -huh. right none uh -huh. of that so when you open the doors um you can see that uh light floods outwards towards you from that room a steady light that is non flickering. Remember, the doors are only about, I'd say it's about like a foot open, like the left door is about a foot open into the room, into the new room. Okay, and we can see light flooding in. Okay, so uh, I'll take a look real quick. Okay, so when you peer, peek your head in, Mort, yeah. uh, you see that you are in the middle of the northern wall of a chamber, a rectangular chamber that is 30 feet east to west. 20 yes. feet north to south. Right, and you're coming in. Okay. Uh, yep. Um, and there is a passageway directly across from you that leads directly south to the middle of the southern wall. And uh, there, okay. And there is a door on the southern okay. end of the western wall. A All right, door. so we've got a uh, uh, passage... And a door on the southern end of the western wall. Correct. And it's a normal wooden door with banded. There appears to be a continual light spell. You've seen this in a number of different places in the Thothian precincts, right? Um, uh, sort of a, you know, a sourceless light. Okay. Um, uh, at the center of a of the ceiling, which is 15 feet tall, which is quite tall for a room of this size. Um, the chamber is plastered. And uh, the frescoes on here are familiar but a little bit different than you've seen before there are 16 large images uh depicting ibis heads specifically and they are uh, they're all 15 feet tall by five feet wide so like huge like basically floor to ceiling depictions of like a of a huge ibis head right with like a long beak basically draping down probably like 10 feet right just and there's 15 of them just uh what I say? No, I'm sorry. It's 16. Just da, 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 all around the chamber. All of the heads are basically staring at the center of the room. The eyes of each of the heads are sapphire blue. Okay. <laughs> um, and there is a extremely thick layer of dust. And this one is not disturbed by Dalton's darlings. Sweet. All right. Um, uh, but you can see that there are also not disturbed by halflings incorrect oh, oh. <laughs> yes so there are a few halfling sized barefoot footprints um that yes. are that are leading uh south uh through the to the southern passage and west through that door however none of them actually approach the door that you just came from. Right. so now on the other Wait, side, on. you're saying that we're seeing like, um, like if I mark them here on the map, some footprints like that. Yep, you got it. Okay, so there. Um, the this side of the double doors, they were unmarked on your side, but this side, um, there are handles, for one thing, mm -hmm. and they uh, the doors themselves are elaborately carved with ibises, baboons, humans, scrolls, lots of strange objects. You've seen a lot of this stuff in sort of uh, discrete areas of the Hall of Shrines, right? All associated with Thoth. Um, and, yeah. Uh, and that is basically it. Okay. You see nothing moving. Uh, John, how does Ibby uh, react in uh, the room of his people? Uh, she trots in between your legs, and she stands in the center of the room where they all seem to be looking, and she just slowly turns in a circle and just sort of looks at all of them. Huh. I think you should repeat her actions and see what happens. 
Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely, I do. Okay, okay, uh, Ebi, Ebi, you would not, you would not steer your your friend wrong, now, would you? <laughs> and uh, I, I, uh, sure. Avarisos will step to the step, step to the middle of the room, and uh, he will uh, look up at, uh, and he'll circle just like. He- you have the feeling, sort of like when you look at the Mona Lisa, that um, they are always sort of looking at you, but you have no reason to believe that they're uh, that they are mobile or animate at any you know any at any of them. Right. Yeah. Always looking, always judging. Okay, do you see? Um, uh, you mentioned the eyes were yeah. sapphire blue. Is that are they painted blue or do they seem to be actual sapphires? Painted blue. Okay. So, but brilliant blue, like um, it, uh, the room has not been touched in, uh, in some time, so it looks like the ravages of time have not done much to lessen its original beauty. Okay. Can I listen okay. at the um, <clears throat> western door? Mm-hmm. It'll take a turn. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to very much be quiet at this point. If, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think we all get, keep real silent. Yeah. Uh, okay, you do not hear anything on the other side. Now so... You got- you guys are looking carefully at your map, correct? Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we go through that, mm-hmm. we might go straight into the hallway we've been in before, um, which I think would probably be safer than uh, popping up inside Halfling Town. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it could. It could be right. Uh, it could. Why don't I? Don't forget, a, a reminder too, if, if when you're thinking about your plans for the Halflings, don't forget that um, if you look at my pointer here. Where is my cursor? Right here. Um, this room here. Remember this on the other side of the chasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So wow. there was this. Um, that uh, brick wall. The brick wall. Don't forget that it had like shoddy workmanship. Yeah. And so um, it's likely that if there are halflings on the other side of that, or creatures in general, they probably heard the noise you were making, especially with the spider uh, fight over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Just, just want to point that out. Right. So okay. I, I think going west is the smart money here. Can I just crack it open an inch and see if I see a light in there? Can you can you douse the lantern for a second? Well, this is uh, the this room oh, is continually right. lit. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I just want to peek. In, you uh, want to begin uh, though? A sliver. So, we, so beyond, we would have uh, reloaded the the lantern right by now. I think, John. Uh, you so want to reload the lantern? Turn. Okay. Yeah. 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 One more turn. Uh, so another twenty-four. One, two, three, four, and that is Avaricio's carrying that on his stump, right? Yeah. So is that my oil? Am I crossing that off? I think that's my oil. Okay. I think that, I think that is your oil. Yeah. Yeah. We can't. I don't want to cross off Gorin's because it's fine. Yeah. I cross off my oil. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I still got three torches. You pr- you probably open the door just a little bit. It it opens easily. Um, beyond using the continual light. Uh. Yeah, I think this would probably reach to the very end. You can see that there is a passageway leading directly west, 10 feet wide, and it um, it goes on for 30 feet, so that the very edge of the lantern light, um, we'll say that Everest is kind of showing over your shoulder, uh-huh. and hits a, another door. <laughs> Which matches up with where we've been. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, but uh-huh. I don't... I remember, yeah, I remember the moan and stuff. There was stuff in this zone where, so we need to still proceed with caution. We can't just start running for home. Sure. <laughs> Are there any features in the walls or ground other than the halfling footsteps? Um, uh, that I can see. No, no, not that you can see. Okay. Why don't you guys stay? I'm going to go to the next door and listen again, but why don't the majority of you stay where you are rather than all huddling into the, the hallway? Well, I guess it doesn't matter either way. Uh, you Point know what? Is, I, um, let let me be in the middle because if there's anything over there, I could I could turn it. Yeah, it's yeah, a good thing. that's a good idea. I just want to know if we need to like slam a door closed that like not everyone's bottlenecked in the hall. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, that makes perfect right. sense. On the other hand, we don't necessarily want to be just sitting out in the open in another room where somebody could walk in and see it's totally lit. Yeah, let's all kind of uh, press against that the uh, that corner there, right by the door, and in, in this yeah. hallway. Yeah, sure. We'll spread out over those forty feet. Okay, 20 feet. sounds good. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the door again. Okay. So you've gone into the hallway, you've gone the thirty feet, you're listening at the second door. Correct. Right. Okay. Uh checking. Yeah, you don't hear anything. I'm gonna open it an inch and take a peek. Okay. You open this door and as you suspected, um, as your as the light kind of peers in, you can see that you are in a very familiar intersection. Yes. There's lots hey. of doors. Yep. 
you you know um as it is you're like where are we and you're like oh wait we came in from the southern end i remember that and then you're like yes to the west is that temple where the, uh, we had the ma'at feathers that's right and you're like oh my god that means if we turn left we're almost out of here <laughs> you know what ah. I mean? like, like you had that moment of realization we're like oh my god <laughs> yeah love it love yeah. it love it love it you have connected okay, your maps so. well done ah what a relief so we gotta um, get out Yes, we do. Uh, we do still have to get down. Uh, <clears throat> and our little friends are going to be down there in that big room. Okay, I so they will now, be good. Well, I was going to say, now is a good time to uh, pee. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> now is a good time to uh, prepare the sack of copper and cursed pennies for the halflings. Um, I just want to say, too, uh, just so you you don't miss an opportunity should you think it is worth the risk you don't know exactly how things may have changed beyond that western door but um if some of you fear that your feathers are no longer useful or got burned up or whatever like that right you are right there again you could go cool. back and get more feathers i don't have a feather anymore but the dungeon does change right it doesn't just stay static yeah uh, who knows i would I rather we get out yeah, I want to get. To, uh, if there's any, uh, you know, hope of recovering from this, I think it's probably not down here in the dungeon. I don't want to. I don't right. want to die down here. I mean, I never did, but uh, you know, there are better places. Okay, so you're at the intersection. What do you do? All right, so I say we. We the NPCs um, are very excited when you relate to them, like where you think you guys are. They're like, good, we, they we have plenty probably... of treasure. We can give them what they need and we can get out of here. That's Samantha. Um, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not this again. <laughs> uh, so don't forget, too, like in this intersection, there's like tons of trash. Looks like this used yeah. to be like a guard post of some sort. I don't think we can fight them, in particularly in our condition. Some well, of us are fine, but most of us are not. I can't do anything to them. And I'm the only thing. First I... level, remember. What's that? I'm still first level. The, as am I. As am I. Yeah. So I. Absolutely oh my darling children! You're so you're so adorable. I love you both. Um, <laughs> I'll be third level. So in like, you know, a couple of hours. Okay, so, 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 okay hold on. Just uh, running through some thoughts because I did not think this is where we were going to be. So I did not prepare at all <laughs> prior to the session. Right. Uh, uh, okay, we suspect they may have heard us at the brick wall which uh, attaches probably to their primary like hovel tunnel that goes north to south. Right. Knowing that they are either or either or both defending at that spot or have come into the debouche room and maybe are waiting in preparation at the northeast side, though I suspect they wouldn't assume we could get into the bronze doors, which is the only advantage we have there. But Best case scenario, at the, they're at the northeast, not at the northwest, because it would be strange for us to go north. around. You mean, when you say northeast, of their territories, you mean? Of the debouche room? No, of the debouche room. So, oh. I mean, okay, where, where's my indicator? Oops. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. So, so, so best there. case scenario, I'm just talking this through as fast as I can, because I don't want to waste too much of our time. But also, best case scenario, if they are, like, armed up and waiting, we hope that they're here assuming that there is a, a, a tunnel that goes north to south here. So if we come out about the other side, they may not literally just be armed up there. They could be the center room. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Well, right. I mean, every time, every other time we've gone through this room, they've seen us from uh, their observation place in the uh, southeast corner. Right? That's correct. They're, they always keep watch over that whole thing. Yes. And we're going to be bringing in a, a lantern light from uh from the north so they'll they'll see us coming I, I i think the thing we have to keep in mind is um are they going to be satisfied with us giving some money or are they going to demand everything like they did yes i mean i i am prepared to fight them if they if they insist on taking everything which is well, not yeah. what they normally have done and, yeah, and i can see where they would do that you know when they've got you over a barrel on the on the cable car there but in this case, you know, they're going to come into a room with eight armed, desperate people. If they, if they want to fight, they'll get it. 
as opposed to like, okay, you're on the cable, we can cut it, or you can give us the money, kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you you have some leverage now. Yeah, we've got these, leverage. These are these are all sound sound thoughts. Uh, my point was not that we should rush in with the intent of immediately fighting them. My point okay. was they've been watching us from the southeast, like you said. They may be in the southeast watching still. They may be in the northeast armed. They may be in the center room. We don't know where in that room they are. Right? I can't know. Right. Best case scenario, they're not sitting at the northwest door waiting for us right there. Right. My my guess. It is feasible. Okay. Though maybe unlikely <laughs> that we could be as quiet as possible and make a run for it, being on the north side of the room, rather than right walk in loud, engage in a conversation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, but that would require us to both be silent and quick, right? Be very efficient with our with our intention. Yeah, yeah. No, Doing I... that would theoretically burn a bridge, except they just <laughs> left us for dead. So I don't particularly care about that aspect of it. Right. <laughs> and to to Matt's point, with the amount of loot that we have that they know we have because they saw us from the wall, I'm not personally in it. They don't know we have it. Yeah, they don't they, know how much we have. They only saw Gorin, I think it was, in oh, that yeah, little they opening. They have no idea how Fair much enough. we got. If we had a way to genuinely hide it, They'd never know. Sure. So, well, that, so this comes to my conclusion. Second. Hold that thought. John that has thought. something to sure. uh, Yeah, we'll, we just need to take our allotted pee break, um, and we will continue oh, the discussion. Perfect. Oh, we good idea. Back. Okay. okay. We'll be, we'll be right. right back, everybody. Okay, continuing our discussion. Go ahead. Right. Ted. Okay, so the halflings claim, I believe it's 10% of take, right? Yes. Uh, which would be 1,200 coins, give or take. Um, they also technically demand 10% of all items found, but that's sort of like a lot more nebulous, right? Yeah. Yeah. How, in how our they experience know? in the past, they've tried to hustle most of the items we are carrying from us, which is how the uh, first torch encounter happened uh -huh. with Avarice. Yes, right? But they're going to give us the stuff you're carrying. A lot of those items that you have can be tucked away like potions, and they'll never know the difference, right? However, you right. do have very mm -hmm. noticeable things that are ornate and beautiful and nice so they're going to see they're going to see the man weeper they're going to see the battle axe my um, patchwork cloak the, the goran's halberd i mean they're not going to yeah. care about the patchwork cloak because the yeah, only reason we even knew about it was the true seeing that's correct that's true it, yeah, it looks like a, a piece point. of shit yeah it, it, it and looks, they, it looks they don't know they don't even know what sam had on her because she didn't come in this way that's correct the only, the person only that, one that they yeah yep you're right you're was, right Matt. Yost. it would just be uh um uh yost mm -hmm. And Yost so is he... not carrying anything new in magic, right? No, Yost is the only one uh, who has not taken anything. <laughs> right. He's so happy what, with I what, would he has. Pitch, what I would pitch is, um, how much copper do we have left? Well, it's funny you should ask. <laughs> Between the eight remaining people, we are carrying, um, well, around 5,000 copper. We'll just say that. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> what I what I pitch is this: we divvy some amount of, of coin into a bag, right, <clears throat> including a bunch of those evil Arcantian ones on the yep. top. Put those on the top. On the top. well, and, and I'm even up for throwing some regular silver and some even some gold in there, just so that when they open it up, they see a mix. Well, my possibly yes, 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 yes. I would okay. also pitch though that. Uh, we do what we can to just cut and run before they have a time to have a conversation. Like, I don't want to walk in right. and, like, chat with them and have them vet our gear, appraise all of our characters, look in the bag, and then go. So, like, I think we should, like, basically try to just sneak on out, either at a fast uh, speed or just casually. And if we engage with them at all, you know, Matt had the thought to maybe, like, toss the bag at them. That's what I want to do. And I just want to kind of think. I think we just keep going. Yeah. So I, should we I, put I wanna... like five hundred copper in it, the 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 naughty coins and some other Fuck things, em. and just copper and coins. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's my opinion. <laughs> you want to so, do a thousand and copper coins? And we stroll out. We drop the bag. Here's you, here's your tithe, you little. You know you. Uh, yeah. Not going to to say it. And then we're just going to keep right on walking. If they want to start trouble, <coughs> you know. Then we fight. Then okay, we you, fight. You know, but... you, I mean, you, I'm sure you guys sort of know this 
unconsciously, but just to make you aware of, you know, like, uh, it's not a matter of just sort of walking north out of the room and then you're scot-free. You have a 275 foot multiple level staircase climb up to the top. Yep. Of your, and you know for a fact that the halflings leave via that frequently. Right. Right. Yeah. On oh, trips. so they could follow us. Yeah. 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 Right. So no. you're just, you're just banking on the fact that they're going to be either one happy with what you're giving them and two, maybe they'll be intimidated by the strength of your group. All these people. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't want to make you mad at me. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know. I'm also, I'm also banking on the fact that I, uh, am very confident in a confrontation that is in a 10 foot wide hall and not in an open room. Right. So if they yeah. want to chase us, it's going to be one at the front and I'm going to, uh, and we're going to concentrate our energy on it. Right. Like I, I feel much more okay with like a fighting retreat in that stairwell. Absolutely. Than I do in giving them time when we're in the room, which is why yep. whether we succeed or running or not, I would love to get all of our bodies in that juncture okay. as fast yeah. as possible. I just want to make my opinion. Yep. I just want to make it clear that once you get into that yeah. junction, that does not mean like the game counter is over necessarily. Of course. Um, yeah. 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 I, have, yeah. I have one more thing to point out, which is that um, the debush room if in the past, maybe still, has three lit torches, if memory serves, mm -hmm. which means maybe, you know, when we're at that weird little T intersection there, we turn out our light and enter the room that way, you know, depending on the torchlight. Maybe they don't notice us. Maybe they do. You know, whatever. Well, but you know where the torches are. Has, is hand free. They they, yeah. They're I mean, the they... ones that light the torches. You know, for a fact, you have them, you have them correctly labeled here. Yeah. And they, they yeah. have seen us every other time. Like, there's never been a time when they were, yeah. oh, hey, where'd you guys come from? Yeah. Right. What's, what's creepy about the room is that only the giant statue of Thoth is the only thing in shadow, which is kind of cool. Like, the direct, the, the, the middle of the room is what's it, in shadow. The other <laughs> thing, I, I don't necessarily want to take that uh, unlight, uh, you know, uh, Dow's our lantern, because if we do make it quickly up the stairs, we're going to be in darkness again. You know what okay. I mean? I'd rather. Well, okay, it. fine. Fine. Okay, so you got the lantern. Um, uh, I see what the plan is. I got it. Um, what do, what exactly is going to be in the contents? I know I need to know exactly what's in the contents of the sack that you're going to leave. Is it a small sack? Is it a large sack? And if and then what's right it? now? I've got a sack with a thousand copper pieces, twenty seven evil coins, and whatever else you guys think we should put in there. Okay. Um, Some rocks. Let's put a bunch of fucking rocks. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, though, like. What if we just put a fuck ton of rocks in a large sack and then covered it with copper? Why haven't we thought of this before? God damn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> rocks, and, rocks and trash. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I mean, that uh, guarantees uh, the next time we come totally down there, it's, it's, it's our okay. fight. You know? Okay, so I'm just talking yeah. for your Any? character sheets. You're taking, I, I, that's cool. Rocks, no problem. Uh, is it a large or a small sack? And whose is it? Because um, that needs to be taken off of your inventory. Uh, you know what? I've just been using my uh, large sack, only half full for a small sack anyway. Do you want to use that one? Let's use that one. Okay, so, so Avaricio, so you no longer have that sack, and then we need to subtract a thousand coins somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking it here, John. Um, I know that we can't like divvy it up right, right now, but we just need to make yeah. a mark that you are now a thousand. That that frees up like what uh, ten slots across the party. Yeah. Okay. Yes, David. Which we weren't. It turns out we weren't actually full as it was, so right. But Mark, now that you have um, ten more slots to carry, <coughs> go ahead, like, David. Feel just, free to. Sorry, go ahead. Ted. I do think we should sprinkle a little gold on top, just right, to. Okay. I don't want to give them a chance to look in because if they do look in it and they see a little gold and they don't chase us, somebody just got their life saved. Okay. Right, they we chase put some gold in there. It's fine. Somebody's gonna die. Right, you know, and maybe it's Yost, and we'll all be sad. Right. Okay, so mark it down: Th a thousand coins, twenty-seven silver or Kantian coins. Those need to be taken yep. off uh, yep. on where you're. Are, yeah. Okay. And uh, what do you and think? Twenty-five gold. Twenty-five. My gold? think. My thinking is the Arcantian coins look more valuable than gold, so that does the thing you're suggesting. But no, I, I, coins. you know how people make... are about gold. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Fine, we'll make some fine, gold fine. in there. It'll look pretty. Okay, okay. there we go. Do Twenty-five gold pieces. Another okay. notion. Feel free to disagree. All right, I will. If I am no longer holding a large sack, I have a wand of light I can blind people with. So you are still holding a large sack. I would love to ditch mine and that be the sack we drop with said gold and stones well, and copper, etc. 
We're uh, well. How many slots are in your backpack, and we're well. Barring that, that gives me no. How many slots are in your backpack? Total available for coins. Okay, available for coins. I want movement right to get out of here with not being the last one left behind. So ninety. Currently, I have one, two, three. Four, five, six slots were allocated to coins. In your backpack. In my in the sack. Oh no, in my backpack. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, I you're you this is critical because you are right now, from my calculations, carrying close to fifteen hundred coins. Yes. If you can't put sack. them all in your backpack, we can't drop a sack. I thought we were doing a thousand copper coins. Well you still have five hundred left. Uh I mean Okay, this is oh, whatever. I don't have to jump a second. This is this is for me. Five hundred extra or less coins is less significant than having free hands to blind someone in an encounter where we're trying to fuck them over, including like adding twenty more gold coins in. You, you get what I'm pointing? Why are you saying? arguing with me about twenty five gold pieces? It doesn't matter. The point. The point. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I I'll keep my sack. I'll keep you my. You can sack. drop the sack. Whoever is if you have to. Okay. Because if, if we're if we're at the point where you're blinding people, we're in combat and we're all going to drop our sacks and fight. Everybody's going to drop their sacks anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think if we're blinding a person in a ten foot hall, we're running, and the person in front of all of their friends is blind, and they're stumbling over them. Again, point we're, 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 in a, we're in a single juncture. I, I'm not trying to turn and fight if they they, they try to fight us. I'm continuing the run the entire time. That's my thought, but it's up to y'all. Right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. Sorry, I, I got confused there. Uh, it's fine. Me. It's fine. Okay. So we're going to... Here's the plan. We've divvied up some coins. We've rearranged some coins. We've got a sack with some decoy money in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go down the hallway. We enter the debouche room. If nobody says hi, great, we leave. If they say hi, we say, here's your 10%, yeah. and we just keep going. I got it. Cool. Is All that right. everybody out in this? And if, and if they stop I mean, us and start to argue with us, then we have a whole new plan we got to come up with. But Right. Okay. Uh, let's let's, let's see how let's see how it plays out is, instead of like looking at every angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah, but, but the one the one thing I want to make clear though is what I'm suggesting is we do not walk into this room. We are already going to the stairs at full clip. Yes. Yep. If we are yeah. gingerly walking into yes. the room, they're going to intercept no. us. Okay. 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 We just book it. We right, leave. Cool. We drop the coins if they say anything. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, so you you rearrange your stuff. You've got the large sack. Who's carrying the sack to that's going to drop it? Um. I th it was my sack. Oh, I can't carry a large sack though, so it can't be me. Well, I gave if we my sack. rearrange. Um, that... If we rearrange stuff, Mort can carry the sack. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, so you, I can put some stuff in my backpack and still have enough room in a sack left to carry it. So it. okay, okay, okay. All right. So you head back, um, and so you go through the door to the south. You have been uh, through here before. Uh, and their hallway goes about 40 feet down before it opens up into another door. Um, you do not hear anything through that door. And going through, you find yourself in that small little guard post. Um, this is a place where at, um, uh, underneath the trash, you actually were able to find a, um, like a gem and some money, but you already picked that up. Um, it does not look like the Athens have bothered to clean up this area or that anyone else has sort of been through here recently. Um, so... Uh, directly south of you, you know that the southern door leads out to the debouchement and the statue of Thoth. So you kind of collect yourselves and you're like, are you ready? Let's do it. Ready, Freddy. And you bust, you bust through the door. It is exactly as you remembered it. Um, so there is the flickering torch that is about 15 feet directly to your left as you walk through the door along the northern wall. The, the, the hints of the giant statue of Thoth sort of peek out at the uh, at the edges of the torchlight. Um, and everything is relatively quiet, except for the low murmur of halflings in the southeast who are sort of like in just sort of quiet conversation. As they're you, like in this room or they're you, off you, down their hallway? You do not see. Uh, because they're beyond their little portcullis. Or you are you're literally your line of sight is blocked by the statue. Right. Okay. As is the as is theirs. Yes. So yeah, you walk in now. Your lantern light um, uh, 
causes like a distinct sort of difference in the light in the room a little bit, right? But most of it is sort of like flush with the rest of the light that's sort of, you know, um, being, uh, being extruded by the, um, by the existing torches. And you run as fast as you possibly can to that northern door. You hear vaguely, you hear a, hey, <laughs> as you go, as, <laughs> as there's uh, eight of you that go flying up uh, out of the room as quickly as you possibly can. Um, who's the last person up? Um, I would probably need to be towards the front or the middle since I've got the light. It could be one of the NPCs too. You can just pick one if you don't want to. Uh, be well, I, I like the idea, it honestly, won't be, it won't of be it trusty. being either Nyal or Yost because they're good at blocking hallways. Very true. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll just say it's uh, we'll say it's y'all, and um, uh, and I uh, believe he canonically hates halflings a lot, right? No, unfortunately, <laughs> he, he, he's got his he's got his uh, little uh, peccadillos. Like, he doesn't like Isocritus. Not a big fan of Garalad anymore, and uh, he really hates baboons. <laughs> 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 the irony, the irony is, is that he actually, uh, he and his Isocritus have that very much in common. Uh, anyways, that's another story on a different level. Uh, yeah, we can get those guys together. They can have lunch. As as nice. you as you nice. run up as fast as you can, I guess it's uh, Mort is like uh, drops the bag, you know, and, and uh, y'all. Well, we're back. only dropping the bag if we saw them. Okay, so. As you round the corner into that, into the northern, um, into the into the stairway that leads up. Okay. Right. At that point, you do see them. There are a number of them um, that you see two that are actually hanging out right by the entrance to the portcullis in that southern chamber. Like they were, okay. they're actually there, like watching, right? Okay. Um, uh, and so I'll they, just shout, here you go, boys, and chuck it on the floor and keep going. Yeah, I say, I say we drop it. Okay. You drop it. And so you, that's when you hear, like, the, uh, hey, uh, sort of like the guy from Monty Python with Lancelot, you know what I mean? And you. Um, oh. and as you did, like they catch you at, as you're, as they hear the jingle of coins, that's when they turn around and saw you, you all head up and y'all was the last one there. He just sort of turns around. And he's like, catch you later on down the trail there, boys. And he, <laughs> and he <laughs> disappears up into the, up into the thing. And you hear, well, stop right there. Stop right there. Ross Kelly, Ross Kelly. Um, uh, Master Plumthorne, Master Plumthorne, they're leaving. They're leaving. Um, and you hear sort of a, a commotion as you guys are like flying up the steps as fast as you can. You can see that um, the light changes in the room behind you as you're as you're moving up the stairs as quickly as you possibly can, as if like torches are being brought to bear, sort of thing. And you hear some like um, echoing shouts and of alarm, uh -huh. followed by it dying down as you round the first switchback. You lose sight of them, right? So and we the, don't the, see the the light kind of approaching the way like the Balrog does in Moria. Or anything you like you that. you act, <laughs> you do a little bit. You actually see uh -oh. like there, there's light in the base of the stairwell as you come back, but the the noise uh, drops away considerably. Yeah, a combination of you turning around a corner and it looks like they have quieted down a little bit. I have a feeling they may have found the sack and are investigating it. Uh -huh. okay. All right, uh, I think we um, keep moving. Keep moving. Um, and you you hear shouting up from from below. You hear a familiar voice. What's the rush, gentlemen, ladies? Uh, Why leaving in such a illness. hurry? Plague! We have the plague. Keep running. And, okay. Thank you so much for the donation. Although I have a feeling you might be skimping a little bit. We shall see you soon. And as you're like still running up the stairs, he's just like his voice is like echoing up from below. He's like, so pleased to hear that you made it out of the chasm. Can't wait to see you again soon. So we, <laughs> oh, we should all stop here and take a shit on these stairs. <laughs> <laughs> when I say I'm coming back with barrels of oil, I am coming back with barrels yeah. of oil. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it leads to suffering, man. <laughs> he says, All right. he, he, you hear like, a, a, please tell Mr. Kettlebelly I said hello. Uh, yeah, 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 you <laughs> bastards. All right. Oh, my God. Guys. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow. So <laughs> when you, do the stairs collapse, John? You, when do the stairs collapse? Yeah, you end, up, it, you end up like you're running and it's like you, then you realize as, as you slowly realize that they're probably not following you, exhaustion like hits you like a ton of bricks because I mean, this is, now it's like the scene from Ghostbusters where you're going up like 21 flights of steps at a flat, yeah. room, at a fast clip and there's just no hang. You just can't be doing that. Avriosos is literally like doubled over, just like heaving 
big gobbets, gibbets of blood out of his mouth. Just, <laughs> I, I, I'm yeah, fine. I can, uh, it's good. I can, okay, so when you finally, after, I'm going to say probably about an hour, um, it's going to be approximately 2 p.m. right now. You drag yourself up. You pull the, 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 the tile to the left and you escape out into the bright sun. Um, you just basically <sighs> crawl your way out like some sort of, you know, underground beasts. <laughs> you know, it's just sort of like <laughs> flop out like like earthworms out of the out of the uh, out of the soil. You know, um, on top of the platform of the pyramid, um, as the sun just sort of like <clears throat> like highlights you and the great statue of Thoth in front of you, as the baboons are in their crouched corners, sort of laughing at you, um, basically daring you to come back this way once again. And you have found yourself in the sunlight. You have escaped from the halls oh my of Arden Void. Oh my God. I got I got an issue. I got an issue. A MVP award to both Matt and Ted for the Great Dust Devil solve, mm. which is an that amazing idea, and a phenomenal bronze door breaking open. Oh man! I do unfortunately was... have to say that we're probably going to roll like one d six bees that are going to kill us in about thirty feet. <laughs> <laughs> the bees! Not the bees! <laughs> Good job, though. That was, that was really oh my amazing, God. guys. Yes. Well, well done. done. Well done. You know, I'm, really glad we, uh, shit. I'm really glad we opted to try those bronze doors, though. Not just because oh, we got oh, open, man. but... Man. Uh, I mean, I really think that other direction would have been bad. One and a six, and you got us out, Ted. I yeah, mean, it's crazy. that is... <sighs> wow. All right, well... Yep, wasn't expecting we... that. So, um, it is approximately 2 p.m. <sighs> um, it is bright out. Uh, you take a moment, and you're like, okay... We're out of there. We know exactly where we are. You are not yeah. safe yet. You are in the middle of the ruined city of Arden Vool. Um, and yeah. it, in order to punctuate how tenuous the situation is, you hear oh, like dear. a oh, from up in, high up in the sky, and you see a shadow like fall over the roof of the pyramid. It's like a, and you oh, hear like a, God. and then lo and behold, yes, you see the green, the dark green scaled mass of uh, Crestoranex as he circles in the sky. Um, and then he, maybe we wait here a little bit. And then he, and he glides off um, uh, on the thermals high, high above you as he sort of like ratchets higher and higher and higher as he heads off towards the southwest. Okay. Looking out the eastern side, you can't help but see the bright shimmering light of the sun filtered down, uh, down that avenue to the east, straight down the well of light where you know exactly <sighs> where that leads. Uh-huh. Before we descend the pyramid fully, can I just do a quick appraisal of the horizon to make sure I don't see any troops of soldiers or mercenaries or anyone who would see a right, group of people around. with giant sacks of or like to uh, Lady Goster were building a fort there at the top of the yeah, hill. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've been out of here. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, excuse me. You uh, looking out over uh, the signs of movement that you can see is straight up the northern boulevard. You can see the. Um, uh, shapes in the northern guard towers stands to reason. Okay. Um, way off in the distance to the northwest, you can see uh, a few folks just sort of milling about the end of the broken head as well. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you see what appears to be waiting in greeting for Crestornex are two smaller wing shaped with sharp barbed tails sort of circling above the southwestern tower in the very far corners. Okay. okay. Um, Which we've seen them over there before, right? Mm -hmm, you yeah. sure have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and <coughs> other than that, you do not see any other moving shapes. Uh, we well, I, don't, I, I don't see any moving shapes because my face is in the ground kissing yeah, the, yeah. Kissing <laughs> yes. the, the, the lovely oh. earth. That I, and, you know, just... Uh, just uh, uh, you know, do you guys know what day it was when we pushed the plunger? And went down to plunger town um i can figure it out i know i know exactly <laughs> it was the seventh we've been down there for just two days yeah <laughs> long oh, days <laughs> yeah oh the too longest long two days minute. ever okay oh. okay so what do you do uh, so it's either the inn or we go to gosterwick i think uh, we go straight to gosterwick but it's up to y'all uh, that's a long way, and we are really for shit. We what? left a lot of money at the inn, by the way. I say we go to the inn. It's the closest. It's just right over there. I say we, we go to the inn. We did just betray the business partners of the innkeeper. Just no, we didn't. They got paid. 
They got paid. Okay. I just if, if in the middle of the night they show up, I want to be ready. All right. Okay, you're moving at ninety, oh, yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to take you about three turns uh, <clears throat> to go um, the normal trip from the pyramid to the inn via the northern gates. Um, do you do anything with the guards? Um, I, w I wave my little stump at them. Hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah. <coughs> um, any any it, yeah, wave welcome. Yeah. Hail. You've met friends, I see. Is that uh, is that Yost? Yeah. Oh, you know Yost. Yeah. Huh? Yost is like uh, out of all the NPCs, is actually the only one who's visibly crying. <laughs> uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, it's me, it's me. I'll, uh, I'll pat him on the knee and say, "They're there." <laughs> be all right. He says, "Is that is that you, Egbert? Egbert?" And he's like, Egbert from up at top. He's like, "Yeah, it's me, Yost. It's Yost. Yost. I saw your friends, Dalton and his men. They came this way. They're up at the oh, end." They're, they're, they're at the end right now. Uh, okay, hold <laughs> on. They're at the inn? They're at the inn, yes. Ah, much he goes, Yost, and like another one from the other tower. Um, uh, he's like, Yost. It's like, they're, they're, they're there, but they're much lighter. We're so glad that you're alive. They all think you're dead. But their party's much smaller than they were when you entered. It's, and Yost is like, I know, I know. We lost so many good people. But I have found new friends. That's right. We kind of saved him. It's no, it's no, you know, no big, no big deal. deal. Um, Did we really? Know? Good, I think we could, saved us. We we could not have left him down there. Any of these fine people, they're very yeah. good. All of them. All right. Good, you found them. We like these as well. Very kind. <laughs> you know, you're just like, well, don't worry. I will get you your usual when you're off shift, just like I promised. What's the usual, Yost? Drinks, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Yeah. Listen, when you're talking to gods who guard the main passageway back to the inn, you got to treat them right. Yeah, I'm, no, sure, I'm, I'm sure you do the same thing for them. Oh, yeah. Go if if we didn't, we will now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Round of drinks for these boys, for sure. All right. All right. Yeah, let's uh, keep going. You know, we, should, we should have a, a, you know, now that we are getting uh, close and civilization is right there, we should, you know... Have a little discussion about some of the more interesting things um, that that we saw. Uh, there were some very interesting, you know, very strange and unusual um, things that we saw. And uh, you know, I, I have a really good feeling about this um, this uh, little group. I feel very bonded to you know. May, maybe it was thing thing about being in jail together. You know, maybe the, the baboons. I don't know, but. <laughs> Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, you, I really feel a kinship. You've gone through something oh. together. You're right, Avarice. This is trusty. Um, we, we, yes, we must discuss things further, I think, over a pleasant repast, which we all we all well deserve. I myself am not feeling as that well, as I can tell you are not as well. Oh, what the, no, I'm I, fine. <laughs> um, I do, like, I yes, do. The, the, the fire's warm. You should go. There's been much activity up here in the ruins. I do things think, are afoot. Uh, I agree with our wise uh, priest that we uh, saw many interesting things. I do think discretion, as as much uh, a joy as seeing our other compatriots might bring, I do think discretion may be something worth discussing before we arrive. Yes, and I kind of look at Yost knowingly. He's uh, I tr if you're worried about Dalton, I trust him implicitly. He's a good man. Other than his, his you know, how he sacrifices hirelings. <laughs> <laughs> but other well, than that. <laughs> I, 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 if I may, if I may, as the mere goblin of the party, uh, <laughs> I think what Anwir is trying to say, Yost, is do you intend to run with us or do you want to run with Dalton again? <laughs> oh jeez, I don't <laughs> what, a, what a spot you and put me in. It's a spot. Let me let me explain. What he's getting at is we've got some knowledge about various things down there that Dalton doesn't need to know. He didn't find it. We found it. And you were part all of it. Yeah, all of all us. Of us and found we found it after we helped you survive yeah. prison. 
No, I owe so, you my life. That is that is absolutely sure. But but the Dalton has also saved my life in just my uh, just being able to be with a competent band like that. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, no, I get here, that. Of course. Yeah, here's, but do you do you owe Dalton our hard work? Absolutely not. And okay. my lips are my lips are sealed. See? Even if I go back with Dalton, I would never speak a word of what you've seen. And just what. I'm sorry. Go ahead, and we're no. Or, I was going to say, you know, I think we're all thinking about the same thing. You know what? Yes. What? What? I think we would all like to do is, if we are going back to any of those particularly interesting places, we get in touch with you. You take a little sabbatical from your uh, normal work, and you come down with us, and you can share in the uh, amazing riches that we all find and know together. Right? The same way that you know, uh, we wouldn't ask to be in anything you found with Dalton. You know. I, I didn't see why he wouldn't need to ask what you I will be about. honest with you. I never thought that I would make it this far, that I would even <laughs> have this choice in front of me. So it is a very much a dilemma for me. However, I understand what you're talking about. You are talking about the room with the red light. And yes, in the strange creatures, I understand. I will say this. I will speak nothing of it unless the presence of those of that area, those strange, horrific things that I saw, if knowledge of that would help save the lives of my compatriots and the Dalton darlings, mm. otherwise I will not speak a word. Mm. You know that that is uh, this sounds very honorable. You see that behind you see wrong. behind them, Tristy and Sam are sort of like just kind of like leaning on each other's shoulders, and they're they're just sort of like nodding their head, just sort of oh. watching. Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. All of you uh, talking to you too. Yeah. We're just and, talking to everyone, and, and y'all y'all just sort of looking around like what. It's like I don't think I've ever seen anything so beautiful in all my life. No. Well, okay. you, know, you and you and I are going to have some business downtown. Don't don't you know? We have a little uh, chat to, to I, have. I understand. I I'm your man for as long as need be to uh, repay the debt for which I owe you. How about you, mm -hmm. Sam, and you, Trusty? You want to run with us? Well, and both, I'm not going to go through both of them role playing, but they both are yeah. in the same situation. Basically, it's separate, <clears throat> separate parties, but they, um, they have reason to believe that the rest of their party has been destroyed. Um, and right. so, uh, uh, Samantha had something that she wanted to do with her party. You have not asked her about that yet. Um, mm. uh, so she, maybe she now's a good time. She can, she can basically like take it or leave it. Like she's definitely not going to go down there by herself. Right, mm -hmm. but she's also not too keen on returning uh, right now. <clears throat> Tresty, however, also it will absolutely not go down there by herself. But she has a strong desire to to want to go back, and she wants to go straight to the library to get her spell book. Yes, like that's that's her. Yes. She wants to recuperate. She's not an idiot. She wants to take mm -hmm. however time is necessary to get back up to strength. But she wants to go down there as soon as possible with a strong party. This is fair. Yes, uh, again, out of character. Totally, right? Until we return, she's very welcome. And I do think, as these guys are getting to add, if we can incentivize them to join us on any adventures, that's great. My main concern is this is a living world. It's a living dungeon. And if there's any risk this, this information disseminates, even by virtue of rumor at this pub, after everyone has a few beers in an hour, to anyone, even outside of their immediate groups, it risks the infiltration of a lot more parties and a lot more interests that probably have a lot more power than us. And so whatever I can do to assure, for lack of a better term, a vow of silence, whether it be financial or threat <laughs> or whatever, I would want to pursue now because it is existential in my, in my mindset. But right. obviously with the agreement of the rest of the party, but like that's, that's my concern here. It's not okay. just like, can we keep the pals together, mm -hmm. but how can I make sure someone in Gosterwick doesn't bring an army down to the, to the, the, the space mm -hmm. room, right. Or whatever. Right. Right. That's so, my concern. If you, so here's the situation with each one of the NPCs. Like if, if, yeah. um, if you want to keep them, this is sort of like where they're at. So Nyal will stay with the party out of a debt to, um, cool. to, uh, Avaricios in a very similar sort of like Chewbacca Han sort of thing, right? Like where he feels he has a, he, he, oh. he, but, well, he has a very strong, he, he feels that he has a very strong debt to you, even though he was under magical compunction. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's a good enough person where like he takes it hard that he did that to you and deprived you of that. So, um, he will stay with the party or at least with Avaricios free of charge mm -hmm. until he makes Avaricios at least when his terms whole again. Right. Yes. Um, so he's part of the party if you want him. 
if Everest just wants to do like the <clears throat> kick, kick the dog away sort of thing, then y'all will go. <laughs> but um, uh, Tresty, um, will if, if you guys decide that you are going back to specifically to that place, she will she'll be with you. She's no problem. Don't have to pay her nothing. Um, but she also she's not an idiot. She 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 has interests in Arden Vool. She wants to explore things. She wants to find magical secrets and things like that. She, you are a strong party. Um, you have proven yourselves to her like that. You can you can maneuver your way around and solve problems and stuff like that. So um, should you hire her on, if you provide her with some money, she'll go wherever you want. Um, awesome. Yeah, but she'll go for right. she'll go for free if you're like when we rest up, I we're going like straight that. back to we're just going straight back to the library. Um, uh, who else? Oh, Samantha. So Samantha um, is straight up sort of, yeah, you haven't asked her about like what her thing is, but um, in general, she is willing to go back because she is an adventurer at, at heart. Um, but she is also somewhere where you would have to pay for her loyalty, basically. Gotcha. Um, um, she has no particular ties to you. She appreciates what you do, but she doesn't really owe you anything other than the fact that you helped her get out of jail, right? Um, yeah. um, but, um, and then Yost is the problem. Yost is the big one because obviously he has uh, he has a party waiting in the wings, like his original party. Mm -hmm. So you, you've already sort of saw this, but um, you have to basically make yourself more appealing than Dalton's darlings. Okay. Or you could just be like, that was really cool little arc. We don't need you guys anymore. Um, and then if you don't, if you want to say goodbye, then yes, you have to take into account. Um, will they talk? That's, that's the right. main question that I that's have. That's the main right. question. Yeah. So Yost is the immediate risk there. Cause he's basically, it sounds like said, I'll keep my mouth shut, but I'm going back to my boys. Uh, the other two are, are purchasable or indebted for some period of time, depending on our next decisions. Well, listen, and we can, we can kind of, uh, help Yost, um, because he can tell them, I mean, they were there with him in the stairwell up to the statues, right? So it would be unreasonable to ask him to not tell at least about, you know, that that hallway continues and that he was captured. I mean, that's right, right, mm -hmm. right. Like that's all yeah. stuff. Yost, you tell yeah. that. That's fine about the baboons yeah, yeah. and everything. That the jail. The only thing we're asking you to not mention is that secret hallway that we found together. Right, just us. The secret one that goes upstairs, to the hall, and the special, the special weird place. Yeah. Right? So everything else you just tell. He uh, Yost will not lie to his buddies in the mm -hmm. Dalton's Darlings. He has no reason to lie to them. They didn't betray him or leave him or anything like that, right? Um, so uh, he doesn't mind omitting the fact that they found that chamber. But if yeah. they're like, if they ask him specifically, what did you find beyond uh, that hall? Then he'll, he'll tell them, you know. Uh, well, let me ask you this. I don't, does, he didn't know, well, I guess they'd be able to figure it out, but he didn't see or know specifically what Onweir did to open that door necessarily, but they're exp experienced adventurers. They'd probably be able to figure it it's out. It's also open permanently now. Yes. The, the tunnel that open. led into the, into the spaceship. Well, the, uh, it's blocked by the statue, but yeah, I guess the statue is blocking it, but the oh, that whole area the statue. Is yeah, 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 yeah. It's open. Yeah. So were yeah. they to go back there, they would see an open passage. Not that they would know how to get to it, but if they already are wise enough, because, uh, Yost knows to hold a symbol of Thoth, it'll move. They can walk right through. They'll get to the Hall of Heroes. They'll, there's a there's a high possibility that they'll get to the alien spacecraft. What, Yost which either to... means it's a race there in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to talk about this too long. I don't want to bore y'all. But it's either a race there in my mind. And we have to go back as soon as possible, or we give up on it altogether. But I do think alien technology is a pretty pretty significant paradigm shift. No doubt mm -hmm. to this world. If Dalton gets it, or if someone. Who roughs Dalton up gets the information from Dalton. Blah blah blah. I don't what know if that's too. What Yost tells you about of. Dalton? Dalton's basically going to be like, <clears throat> um, he's going to be super happy and shocked to see that Yost is alive, and then he's mm -hmm. just going to want to know how did you get how did you get out? Like what what happened after that that scuffle with the statues? Right when we were statue situated. What Yost tells you what he's going to tell Dalton is he's going to say, I ended up getting captured, and after a little while, this is all the truth. I ended up getting captured and thrown into prison, and eventually uh, these other these these fine folks got thrown in as well. We were able to break out and make our way back out. And as long as Dalton accepts that and doesn't dig deeper, then that's the end of the story. Right. And he has a Sounds feeling that, to me. that Dalton is the kind of guy that 
you know, um, unless something seems fishy or suspicious, he's not going to dig too deep. He's going to be very happy to see Yost. Okay. Yeah. And what about the dark wizard with them? <laughs> a different matter, no. perhaps. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. But, but no, Dalton, no, no, no. Dalton is the leader. It has a very, very strong personality. Okay. So the, the, re the reason is, why is Dalton the leader and not Heliogabalus, right? If Heliogabalus is so, so much the shit, right, then why isn't he the one running the, running the show? Right. <clears throat> well, I hope Dalton wasn't the leader because of his magic pouch of coins that always produce more coins. <laughs> he's not going to be in charge much longer. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's do something here. What do you plan to do? Yeah, let's. Uh, oh, please, 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 can we go to the inn? Oh, I, think, I want I to think go there the, so bad. The well, um, you can have the conversation and see what happens. Maybe they're not. Yeah, even we're there. walking along. We're talking as we're walking. Uh, we do need to decide about you know divvying up the coin like right now it's divvied up based on who can carry what kind of thing but it's roughly equal but everybody should get um their share we're gonna have to do our share out here <clears throat> with these guys um and i think at this point you know we just split the coin eight ways i agree and uh they are they're not hirelings they yeah they all do yeah together. okay so you make your way back um, and after having an extra turn conversing with the guards, um, uh, you come back now, like all like the hands that are working the, uh, outside with the stables and all that kind of stuff, like everyone, Kronos and Estelle, um, and then you assume these people who are actually Dalton's darlings, um, all, uh, let me just check here. Really. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, and then the statue uh merchants right those guys those statue brokers they so like a, a whole bunch of people sort of come out like everyone sort of comes out of they see like this large party of people come out who are all like dragon ass and um everyone sort of crowds around you and estelle like puts like a blanket over avaricios's shoulders and kind of takes you takes you in and crodus is like clapping more <laughs> in the back and like goes um and um you just see like there is this party of five obvious adventures and they are like all of their jaws are just completely dropped as they're just sort of like looking at yos and they just don't even know like what even to think and then you just see you see one of them um sort of stand forward and he's a uh he's a, a human he's very tall and extremely handsome he has like a flowing brown hair that's tied back with a leather cord a, a, a rapier uh you know dashing sharp smile wow. um and uh Jump. just like super charismatic and he's just um like got on these, a scale like, of one to 18 how handsome is he <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three, to 18, three, to 18. Yeah. three to 18 sorry yeah, yeah he's yeah. he's up there um and he's like wearing like a like leather garb with like just the right amounts of strings like loosened on the top right you know what i mean just like <clears> showing a nice little peck line there and everything you know and um and he he kind of saunters up and he sort of it doesn't even look at the rest of you, right? Um, almost gently sort of pushes, not rudely, but just sort of gently pushes you aside and moves through. And he, he looks up at Yost and he grabs like his chin. And he's like, Yost, is that you? And, um, and Yost, you just see is like freely just like, like sobbing. And like, you know what I mean? And he, gra he grasps like these th with his thick mitts, like he covers like uh, Dalton's hands, you know, he's like, Dalton, it has been so hard. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, he's like, I, and he's, he's like feeling Yosef's face. He's like, I can't believe you're alive. This is, I cannot believe it. And he looks over at a, um, at, uh, the one, no, I'm sorry. There are two. Yeah. Two other, uh, uh, one of the two females that are actually with him. She's short and she's actually kind of hideously ugly, ugly, has like a hunchback and like, um, like, uh, gray hair, but actually smooth skin. Um, and <coughs> Uh, and she's got a symbol around her neck. I don't exactly know what it would depict, but I'll look it up in a second. But, and, uh, he's like, Yvette, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you that Yost would find a way? And Yvette looks up and she makes like a sign to the heaven. She's like, the Belaton, the Belaton told me that Yost would find a way. Um, and Yost is like, no, it was not the God's work. Yvette, you know, I have all the respect in the world for the Belaton, but it was not not that great god's work it was these men these men that helped hello us. <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah, uh, we wave. Lysion gets credit where Lysion, uh, is due 
uh, not to be suspicious of everyone all the time, but just in the conversation of, didn't I tell you, does Onweir get any sort of sniff of, like, a person who thinks they have divination on their side? <laughs> person who can see beyond sight, in other words? Like a, like a magic user? Yeah, like, or, yeah. or like, yes. beyond just, like, hope that they thought they would see him again for some other reason. Does it, in the tone of the voice, I know it's a strange question, but do I get a sense that... Oh, no, no, not like that. You're no. so paranoid, dude. No. Uh, <laughs> we, we have a man holding a huge lie, and I'm just trying to make sure there's not someone in the party who immediately, like, sees into his soul. So I'm just... You know, no, no, no. Um, the these, story's gonna get out or anything. These folks Sorry. seem to be, like, like very capable right around the same amount, like, like around you oh. guys, right? Um, oh. uh, like, capable adventurers. They know what they're doing. Cool. Um, and as Yo sort of turns to you guys, you guys make your introductions. We have to go through it, but I'm going to give you a, like yeah. a real quick rundown of what Dalton's darlings basically are like. There's Dalton. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, uh, there's Dalton. You described a vet. Yeah. Uh, there's a vet, right. Um, she appears to be a cleric of, uh, let me find a Debelaton. The Debelaton, and I'll give you a little quick little. Debelaton is not particularly the nicest god. Uh oh. Uh, the go the god, god of bicycles, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so Debelaton is a lawful evil god of. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, if we were if we were playing a D and D, we are not, so we'll go with chaotic. Um, uh, Debelaton is the has the areas of influence of death, might, order through might, and sacrifice. Um, and oh. uh, we'll say that her symbol that she was carrying was actually a solid black disc of obsidian, which is what she raised to the sun. Um, in I, praise. I wanted to go on record that Ted said, David, you're too paranoid. And <laughs> the first character we learned that is a worshiper of the god of death. <laughs> hey, I think you guys would probably get along really well. Oh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, Someone has to worship the god of death. Yeah, so she's short and hunched back. There is um, uh, Isidore happens to be a halfling. Um, he's round, plump in the Tolkien uh, Hobbit mold. Um, he has a ridiculous hat that's actually like a top hat, which is like very, just doesn't like fit with the rest of him. Um, and he's wearing bright but faded clothing. Um, he smells horrible. He has like really bad BO. Um, and he has like a flush cheeks that are more than just the rosiness natural to halflings. It's definitely like my little problem with a drink, if you know what I is mean. He's a, a, a maniac. He's got a little bit of a of a red, um, distended nose, a little bit. Oh um, dear. Uh, then there's the other female whose name is Helga. Um, she is, she's like how you picture a Helga, right? She's whiskin. <laughs> she is a whiskin woman. You know what I mean? She's, yeah, she's yeah. Big, she's big. She's blonde. Um, she's basically like the like an extra on Vikings. Um, yeah, she has she has a <laughs> very <laughs> long scar that goes uh, across her left cheek. Um, but she's very very quiet, right? And she moves like a snake, even though she's very very big. Um, and lastly, there's Heliogabalus, yes. the human Arcantian magic user. Arcantian, you know right away because of his long aquiline nose. A hawk like nose. Um, he is, uh, he's thin, ascetic. He has long, greasy black hair and that long, aquiline nose. Um, he is repellent in almost all ways. Like, he just does not look like a person who wants to talk to you or who you want to talk to. Distant, mm. unpleasant, aloof, very. He's got a chip on his shoulder. You can already tell he is not. He's the only person who has not stepped forward to greet you. He had to be introduced to you by Dalton, unlike the others who were just, you know, actually introduced themselves. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and he mm. he looks at each of you with deep suspicion, does not look particularly happy to see Yost back, gives him just a short, uh, punctual nod of recognition and uh, looks with great aggression and disdain at our illusionist. On where? <laughs> well, we I, all I, blow, I blow him a kiss. <laughs> oh, whoa. I, he, I actually do, though. I he, actually uh, do. He looks at you and glares, and he steps over to Dalton and whispers in his ears, and Dalton kind of looks at you and just sort of laughs, and he he pats Helia Gavlis on the, on, the, uh, on the shoulder, and he just, like, pushes him aside, and, like, Helia Gavlis says, I, match, 
Yeah, I match Dalton's <laughs> smile with a smile of my own, so I go from the, the kiss blow to sort of being in on the joke. Uh, he's like, don't don't mind my friend uh, Heliogabalus over here. And by the way, don't ever give him a nickname. You must speak the entire <laughs> name. And he, he like rolls his eyes. He's like, uh, and he, so he says, he says, Gabby. he says behind his hand, but says it like really loud so everyone he is, he could hear. Listen, we could really use another magic user in the party. So if you're... <laughs> We'd much I rather like have you. Applications. You look much more fun than Heliogabalus. <laughs> <laughs> you see Heliogabalus is just like getting redder and redder and redder. And Yost is like, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you all again. Yeah, yeah. Glad to think see nothing has changed. <laughs> it's right. family, you know? Uh, well, and he's like, well, we have been through something. And it looks like you have too. We must share our stories over a glass please come inside come inside i know you've been done in the dark for so long and cronus is like yes everyone an inn full of adventurers this is what i've always wanted come come in and can i ask a question oh yeah sorry go ahead can i ask no, a please, question go ahead. to be reminded of the possible sleeping arrangements here is it one shared room like a no we have a room we paid for we for a room. week ago like two days ago that's what I thought. Yeah, we've got a, a room. I'm going to recommend, though they may not agree to it. Well, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep an ear on them, even at night. And so I would, would think I'd, I'd say, oh, it's so good to see you. Why don't we buy these grand fellows a room to share with us so we can share that tale as we bed down for the night? Uh, so the private rooms that you have are not large enough to house, like, everyone there? Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are three private rooms, of which you have one. You could buy them their own if you wanted to be nice folks. Um, but uh, for now, they're actually just sleeping in the bunk room for cheap. Yeah. I mean, it's, it seems like it would be a little nice to, you know, put at, at least the people who, you know, who, you know, our companions, our traveling people, to put, to put them up in a private room. I think we should put them up, and I want to sleep where Yost sleeps. <laughs> Might not be possible unless you can figure out a way. Yost, um, uh, Yost plans to stay in the bunk room. Which is the large room um, with the Dalton's darlings? Um, if you, if oh, if, if you if you room. want him to stay with you guys that night, he he will do that as well because he you know he he's not he's not in any urgency to just be with the Dalton's darlings. You what know? I'm going to recommend mm -hmm. is that one of the others take my spot in the single room, and I'm just going to crash in the bunk room. I'm that's that's fine. Yeah, the bunk room is like yeah. the common, so it's like it's, <clears throat> no one will think twice that you want to be there. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, trusty or Sam wants to. Stay in our room. That's fine. Okay, so it's like mid afternoon right now, like three ish, right? Um, we're we're in the all, but yeah. So um, uh, yeah, drinkies. Okay, and experience and leveling up and healing. Yeah, and oh. dancing girls and. Okay, so well, we oh, have about and, we have about fifteen and, minutes left in this session, and we probably don't want to spend it just sort of like doing the bookkeeping of no, 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 no of no, tallying no. all that I, stuff. I know that uh, the audience as well probably wants to definitely see like how everything shakes out as far as yeah what money is and where it's going to go and um, how much XP and all that sort of stuff, and we'll break all that down. But um, uh, uh, assume this: like nothing untoward is going to happen to you at the end of the broken head, but you have lots of opportunities okay. here that you guys have already discussed. So. Um, you're going to have to kind of figure out exactly how you want to prioritize things, how much you actually want to take care of here at the inn, and how much you actually want to do at Gosterwick. Yeah. Right? Well, the, there's there's one kind of question very heavy on my mind here, <laughs> which is, um, how's Av doing? How's Av feeling now that he's able to rest in a bed in a safe place? Uh, you are not feeling good at all. Uh-huh. Um, do you want to cut forward? Do you want to sleep? Uh, I don't want, know. Do you, want to, do you want to have discussions like right now? Mm. Uh, I mean, the innkeeper well, we have to get, have to get the gossip to with the blanket. Those. Perhaps she can tell you what's wrong with you. Yeah, I mean, she is um, uh, uh, more uh, advanced in the healing arts than uh, yeah. So than the, I am. Estelle took you aside the moment that you kind of like she immediately pegged you as like hurt, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, now your gods don't align, but you are part of the same pantheon. Um, uh -huh. so, uh, she worships Tychius. Um, you worship Lysion. Uh, Yvette worships Debelaton. Debelaton, um, is like a, a might makes right. Like, like very just, <laughs> yeah. And she's like, for her, it's like Darwin's Dar Darwin, Dar Darwinism, right? Like she's like, 
you're already a lost cause. Like you're, you're like when she History, looks at when yeah. she looks at you, you're like the Walking Dead. Like uh -huh. dismisses you as like a non-issue. Doesn't want to talk to you. Okay. Has no desire to go through like, what what your what's going on with you. Um, however, uh, Estelle is much more. Um, uh, she's a sneaky person, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. but she's got a good heart, uh, at least on the surface. And so she takes a look at you, and uh, she quickly determines that you are in deep shit. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh, so you this have is not been, the surprise. Yeah. She she asks you like, what happened? Do you do you do you obfuscate that, or do you just sort of tell her like, I drank randomly from a thing that helped us the first time, and then the second time it fucked us? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I would tell okay. her. Okay, you don't hide it from her. No, no. Okay. Um. So she is baffled by that. She can't make heads or tails of it, but she's like, you obviously consumed something that was not good, and um, you unfortunately have a, a wasting disease of some sort, and uh, you are. Uh, on a one-way path uh, to a to the end of your mortal life, basically, um, you will continue to every day. You are going to feel worse and worse and worse until you finally end up just not being able to hold yourself up, and you will pass away. Um, and she said, "I'm sorry to have to say it so bluntly, but uh, oh. you should have. When you are this close to your God, I feel that we should not mince words." Um, um, and and we if, if we were playing a game of called Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and we had to assign a mechanical value to what's happening. <laughs> you will be uh, you will be losing one point of constitution at every sunrise. Oh, unless that's, you are able to find odd. someone with much uh, with someone, and she sort of like presents herself. Uh, if you yourself have enough coin, all possibilities are open. She says. There there's the kindness leaving the room uh -huh. yes, exactly <laughs> there are certain there are certain followers um uh who are in great favor with their gods who may be able to uh lift such curses and diseases from those afflicted but a proper donation to the cause would of course be would not be looked uh, unkindly at give her uh, the jade necklace tell yeah. her she looks pretty <laughs> she does look very nice at this point and uh, how how uh, what kind of uh, donation are we talking about here? So I'll skip I'll skip through her um, role playing, but we've we've talked about this before. I believe it was with Onweir whenever or was it Onweir or Varger? It might have been Varger. Varger, I think. Yeah, um, I can't remember. So basically, if you want shit done at the end, it costs a lot more than it does at Gostwick. Uh -huh. So uh, you already know this. You discovered this that it um, at the temples back in Gosta work uh, a remove curse, which is what you need. Right? Uh, it's it could either be cure disease or remove curse. Doesn't really matter. They both cost the same. Okay, and, and have about the same availability at the high temples um, in Gosta work, like the really powerful temples. You can get um, as long as you're not like directly opposed from the god that is you know at the temple. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get a cure disease or remove curse for five hundred gold. Estelle though. She could do both. She doesn't care, but it's going to cost one thousand gold. Now yeah. that was a that was like an instant no, uh, <laughs> many many weeks ago. But mm -hmm. uh, you guys got some cash right now. Uh, Plus, we have what was left behind here when we went down last time. Uh, we we left some stuff um, in storage. Like we act, we absolutely have a thousand gold. You don't can for, use. It don't forget to. I just want to put it in context that uh, Estelle, you know the god she worship. She has exhibited suspicious behavior before. You know that there's mm -hmm. something going on with her and Kronos with the halflings, also with something behind the bar that you have yet to investigate. Uh, and the god that she worships, Tychius, is known for trickery and deceit. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you can't just just all that added up. You can't be a hundred percent sure that the diagnosis she gave you is absolutely true, but it sure does line up with how you're feeling. Let's put it that it way. feels how, uh, <laughs> feels about right. Well, here's here's what I think. Um, I think I don't want to. Uh, it seems foolish to go to Gosterwick right now. I think we should. I think we should sleep. I think I, you know, I will be able to tell some veracity to her story when I wake up in the morning. See how that goes, and then um, either way, I think tomorrow we go to Gosterwick straight away. I mean, they will be able to. More treatment options are going to be available. I'll be able to seek a se second opinion more easily down there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to sleep through the night. All right. So, uh, first of all, uh, you guys have already paid for your private room. Right. So, I don't think... 
even on where because you already paid for yours, then the bunk room doesn't cost anything. So I don't have to do that. Um, if you want food, uh, or do you want to eat your rations? Food. I want food. I want okay. Food. If uh, I can hold it down, I want to eat it. Eat off the bone and malt beer. Uh, yeah, you're famished, and you can definitely afford it. If you want a rich meal, um, it's two gold per person. It's two silver for a simple meal, which is what you've been getting so far. You wanna you wanna spend a little and get oh, some, no. some decent Splurge. food? I want I want the good stuff. I'm, Splurge. I might die. I want to live it up. Okay, so Absolutely. please please mark on your character sheets. Please mark, mark it. Um, I know that it's a small amount to the majority you have, but uh, if you want simple, two two silver. If you want rich? No, two, two gold. gold. I'll spend it for sure. Marking it off. Um. Okay, John. When the moon comes up, yep. Mort will go outside, and and sing the hymn of death for Squeegee. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, in Goblin. Goblin. You know what? You know what? I, I feel really bad. I'm going to. I'm going to get up out of bed, cough my way out, and I will go with Morton. And also, I will, I will say, I will sing the song and I will say a prayer as when best as I When your voices are lifted up in remembrance of the death of Squeegee, yeah. Hel, Hel, uh, Yvette can't not help but he over here and recognize those hymns of death. And remembrance, and she herself comes out, and uh, uh, and her strange sort of like crone-like form mm. sort of shuffles up next to you, and she lifts her voice in a hymn to Debelaton. And strangely enough, despite like the ominous overtones of a worshiper of Debelaton and the way she looks, her voice like clearly ca carries over yours and is like um, uh, surprisingly beautiful and resonant and deep as she intones a dirge, uh, which is uh, specific to the Church of Debelaton, um, and it's uh, quite beautiful. Nice, nice. Okay. I will thank her for her uh, her um, her song. Right. She, uh, and for the she memory says, of poor Squeegee, lost deep within Ardenvul. Uh, she puts a, a, a hand on your shoulder, Mort, and she says, I did not know your uh, fellow companion. But I am sure that he rests now in the warm embrace of Great Debelaton for all time. Was the world's greatest goblin. <laughs> uh, David, you want to say something? Sorry. Uh, it's I, oh, I. Well, we made it through the night. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Did you want to say something? things before we go to sleep that I wanted to say? But you can't. This that, is, this happened at nighttime. This prayer. So if you want, this to... prayer is at night. Yeah, not in the morning. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it, it was when the moon came. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't worry. We might still be dead. I uh, yeah. I mean, uh, again, as discussed, I am abundantly paranoid, perhaps for no reason whatsoever. But I just want to uh, note that again, our innkeepers are in cahoots with the halflings, who may or may not feel some kind of way about what just happened who may or may not have secret access to the dungeon or any number of things behind this bar <laughs> because they have openly been concealing things from us every time we interact with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like super comfortable with like our sleeping arrangement being safe, though hopefully it is. But I think maybe y'all should bar the door or do something in case someone comes knocking. I'm still going to go in the... Um, main bunk area just to listen in in case I hear Yost whispering in the middle of the night to Dalton or the evil wizard interrogating him or anything like that. But I don't know, just abundance of caution is what I'm suggesting if that's what you guys agree with uh, in case we have a troop of halflings wake us up in the middle of the night like Ring Race. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, okay. I don't know. <laughs> that's all I had to say. I just I I wanted to say before the moment happens that I'm like, <laughs> you know, on guard. Okay, so I got the plan. Yeah. Um, you, you, on where you're basically like, uh, with reason, you're going to be Mr. Paranoid. Like you're going to bunk in that same room. You're going to listen very carefully and see if anything is, if you're picking up any weird vibes, the rest of you are basically going to sleep after a good repast yeah. and Alphorisios is very keen as to how he feels in the morning. If um, it means I sleep, I lose sleep. I will just forfeit sleep. Okay. So what I'm saying. Yeah. it's interesting that you do it on where, okay. Because, um, you do. We're going to end this here basically with, I'm going to, it's not a lower dump, but I'm going to, but you hear a lot of things. Okay. First of all, just like you anticipated, uh, there's, there's merriment. Everyone sort of sits down in the dining hall, has a great meal and all that sort of stuff. And then everyone sort of goes to bed, right? You guys are absolutely exhausted. I can't, I can't 
like express that enough. Like <laughs> the moment you, f you get good food in your belly, it just has a soporific effect on you where you just, you want bed. Right. Um, mm. uh, on weir, when you go up to the bunk room, um, and everyone sort of gets quiet again in Yost, um, uh, Yost in a very childlike manner actually kneels before his bunk and says a prayer to some unknown God. Aww. Um, and then he, uh, crawls into bed. Uh, no sooner does he do so than um, the, members of the Dalton's Darlings kind of come over real quickly and just sort of um, pat him, like sort of like tuck him in almost. Like they kind of tuck him in like a, like a lost child. It's very, very sweet. However, the last person who does not leave after the other ones do is Heliogabalus. Yes. He, yes. Sta he stays next to Yost and he just sort of, he sits and he attempts in a very strange and awkward manner to sort of like sit on the edge of the bed as, as if he's like telling him a bedtime story. You know what I mean? But it's like super awkward and like weird, you know, and he <laughs> and he quietly sort of talks to Yost, right? And you can see Yost um, in the manner of his voice is sort of um, fearful and a little bit reticent. Um, and um, and you can tell that uh, Heliogabalus is definitely like grilling him as to like what exactly happened. He wants to know exactly. And um, as you perk up on Weir and notice this, um, and listen carefully, you can pick up a lot of the conversation. He has particular interest in you on Weir. He wants to know everything about you um, and your relation to the rest of the party. Um, but he's particularly interested in like what you know, what you saw, um, and uh, everything that sort of like ripples out from that. Um, Yost, to his credit, uh, does his best to stick to the plan that he had agreed with you. There, you do sense no intent to deceit to uh, betray yeah. you as the party, um, but he crumbles uh, without much pushing from Heliogabalus's um, uh, interrogation. Right, like, he, like you know, he's scared. He's scared of Heliogabalus. You know what I mean? Um, so there, you. He gets the exact details of the chronology of uh, the manner in which Yost was captured and, and imprisoned and how long he was there before you guys showed up and who, who was in which cell and all that sort of stuff. The nature of Njal um, as a jailer turned companion. Uh, what, you know, it, the, he gets out of Yost everything about like Avaricios and the manner of how he lost his hand and all that sort of stuff and the escape. Like none of that was lies and Yost voiced up like all the details basically, like how everything happened, right? Um, and uh, Yost does leave out because it appears that Heliogabalus did not uh, ask about the throne room take, right? Like like the, the, the ruby throne, what was found there, how much was taken. Like, like he, Heliogabalus seems to have no interest in the treasure that was taken, basically. No interest at all. Um, he's more interested in you guys, right? Focused around Onweer. Mm -hmm. He seems to make the assumption that Onweer is the leader of the party, all right? Um, and <laughs> Heliogabalus himself, in the way that he talks to Yost, it comes Thanks, across. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You got it. Exactly. Yeah. Because um, uh, naturally, only someone with knowledge on the level of, of what you and uh, he share uh, would be fit to lead a party, right? Well, or you're describing as sociopaths. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, um, and, Yost does his best to deflect when it comes to the point where you get to the statue room again and what happens after that point, right? Heliogabalus senses that there's something wrong with the way that Yost is deflecting because Yost just doesn't have that ability to deceive, right? Um, and, but interestingly enough, Heliogabalus actually pulls back. You can, you can hear and see that he doesn't push, right? But he definitely knows that Yost is hiding something. But he just sort of pats Yost on the back and he says, well, we'll talk later, he says. Um, you have a good sleep, Yost. You won't hear it from me in the future, of course, out in the open, but it is good to have you back. And sleep well, my friend. Um, he goes, Thank you. It's, it's good to be back. And he's like yawns and he stretches and he goes to sleep. <laughs> um, over the night, over the course of the night and the drinking and the merriment and all that sort of stuff, you hear from Kronos and Estelle and the other darlings and um, the guards who come back from their shift and Yost buys them their drink. We're going kind of going back in time here now. Yeah. Um, uh, you hear uh, some the following interesting things have occurred in the few days that you guys have been underground. Okay, lots of activity has happened, centered, not surprisingly, around the fact that the hand of Arden is in use. Right, there have been multiple people 
uh, coming up and down. Each of the people that have, uh, each of the parties that have been coming up have been escorted <coughs> carefully by Knights of the Azure Shield, by the Popo. Okay. Um, no one has, uh, it, this falls in line with exactly the, the arrangement that you had made with Eusebia uh, back in Gosterwick. So uh, if it appears to be firmly in control of the Knights of the Azure Shield, okay. Um, it is in use though, however. Uh, first of all, um, you hear that there is a, another well-equipped party that is sort of doing something interesting in the city, okay? Um, they stop at the end, they introduce themselves. They're known as the Five Fingers of Destiny is what they call themselves. Everyone sort of, everyone what? sort of, everyone sort of chuckles around, you know, like especially yeah, Dalton's no like, what a lame name for a party, unlike the Dalton's battle of the bands. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 uh, the five fingers of destiny um, are led by a turban headed robed stout man. Uh, they assumed that he was a leader. Um, um, there was a couple of big warrior types. There was also a halfling uh, and there a black haired woman and a man with a tattooed eye. They didn't give their names, oh. a relatively quiet group, very mysterious, but seemed very, very capable. We didn't want to cross them. Um, they were seen crossing the bridge. Uh, let me get to it here so I can make sure that I get the correct one. I'll move over to Albert. Uh, are you guys hanging out just for a little bit while I dump this info on you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm loving this. Okay. Um, hold on one sec. Sorry. Burp, burp. Yes. Okay. You guys on Albert? Yep. Okay. So they were seen crossing this bridge right here. Okay. Um, and they were clearing away rubble on the other side over here. Okay. And then subsequently they were seen, this is mostly the guards, uh, the guards, by the way, uh, that, uh, who are up in the towers, name are Egbert and Cassowary are the two guards. Those guys saw the, the five fingers of destiny investigating at different times, three obelisks, which are well known apparently to everyone at the inn. You guys have seen or have investigated one of them. One of them is right here, right? Hmm. They were investigating that obelisk, and then they mentioned the other two. You actually saw the broken remains of one that was hiding behind the yeah. walls of the Moon Palace yeah. right here, right? And then another one, which is new to you. Apparently, there are three, and the other one is deep in the swamps. Wait a minute. Three obelisks? Three obelisks, yeah. Three pyramids. Right over here. I wonder here. if they're connected. I wonder if that plunger would work on an obelisk. The last obelisk oh. appears to be right here, if you wanted to mark that, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Okay. They, were, um... they were investigating those three obelisks. They were overheard at the Broken Head asking about the existence. They were specifically asking the statue brokers who were not able to help them about the existence of, quote, silver ox chased with red glass and they showed one that fit that description you remember way back i believe in session two when you invested the idea that obelisk that there was a deep inset onk as if an onk could be placed in the inset they were asking about silver onks chased with red glass um uh they have been in the ruins for some time and at one point they actually met with uh what the group, what the people at the inn call scholars. They're just known as scholars. And they, uh, they all, these scholars seem to be holed up. They feel, appear to have recently fortified this particular tower right here in the West. Oh. They appear to be like a group of sages or scholars all bent on some sort of uh, mission that they, they feel that they're like looking for something within the ruins and have decided to make mm. like a, a semi-permanent <laughs> base right here at this tower. Okay. Um, the five fingers of destiny, uh, uh, met with these scholars at one point after their investigation of the obelisk, and then they went back down the long stair. And they have not been seen since. Okay. Uh, interesting, like what their motives are, but they were seem focused on those obelisks. Crastonisterex, the great worm, uh, they've been seen flying more often, and just recently, yesterday, in fact, um, the guardsmen actually witnessed Kroz, uh they call him Kroz. Uh, as a nickname, like a, um, and they actually saw him th destroy a patrol of beastmen who had actually made their way up to the surface. B 
beast men who were, you know, had either rat or dog or pig f- or sheep faces, um, all dressed in like old imperial regalia. You've heard stories about these people before, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, they were out in the open and Kraz, uh, even though other people have been seen, like the scholars and the and the adventurers and you guys, right? You guys have witnessed the dragon a number of times and have never been accosted by him. When the beastmen appeared, the guardsmen saw that there was a ravening hunger and the and Kraus basically dived like a peregrine falcon and uh, lifted those guys up and just ripped them limb to limb and shoved them down his throat in midair in mid-flight. <laughs> um, and interestingly enough, he actually saw... Uh, the the guardsmen actually saw at one point the scholars leave their tower in the west and actually make the long, dangerous trek through the mire to the southwestern tower, which is known to be Crastonisterex's uh, lair. The scholars actually went there themselves, which is also very mysterious. Um, they, uh, they've been hearing uh, baboons at nighttime only coming from the eastern tower uh, right over here. Uh, hold on, I can't see that. Just a second. Uh, the baboon tower, way over there, huh? Yeah, way over there. They've actually only at nighttime they can hear them, um, uh, screeching at night in that tower over there. Uh, and they've actually seen once again those weird scholarly robe types, not only going to the most dangerous part of the ruins, Crestonisterex's lair, but also seen making the long trek past the pyramid down the eastern boulevard and making their way to that very tower. Mm. Um, uh, yes. Then, lastly, and probably the most interesting to you guys, and we'll, then we'll call it a night before we decide what to do with the, your downtime. Um, as your ears perk up, I bet you hear about, because everyone travels in groups, Right, no one is an idiot enough to actually travel singular, singularly here in the ruins. However, there was one man. There was indeed one man who, who emerged from an old from uh, one of the ancient priests' high residences, like one of the very high-ranking priests of Thoth. Um, uh, there's a lot of these villas that are around, but in particular, we're talking about this one right here. Um, okay. The little sort of Y so, shape thing that's there. Right here. Yep, you got it. Yep, mm-hmm. that is the ruins of an I... old priest residence. And uh, when they talk about the day that they saw them, you guys are able to uh, re- you guys are able to piece together that this was the exactly the exact same day that you actually saw the knights traversing the long stair down. Do you remember that when you were actually mm-hmm. like going down the hand, and yep. then you saw the knights kind of making their way down the long stair, and they were just sort of like gaping at you, right? That was a, that was the third of Ligarios, by the way. It's the ninth right now. So it was about six days ago. Okay, that same day, they saw a man. This is the guards once again. Um, uh, emerge from underneath the rubble of that residence, and they met in that person. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that person came out and were immediately uh, surrounded by the Knights of the Azure Shield. And they had a long discussion before the knights moved on to the long stair, right? So this discussion seemed to have happened before you actually saw them as they were moving down the stair, right? When they described the man, the man fits the exact description of Isocritus. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Interestingly enough, there are no knights here at the inn. Yeah, I was wondering about that because the darlings are probably still wanted. Uh, yes. Um, which, if we get a chance to ask about that whilst drinking, like, hey, what do those knights want with you anyways? When you, you bring know, that I'm... up, they are actually shocked, and it appear, even Dalton is like, what? What do you mean the knights want us? Um, oh they, yeah, they, they were all over the place a few days ago hunting for you guys. They were like, really did, pissed. Did I forget to mention that, gentlemen? This is Kronos. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit that of an dog. oversight on my part. Ah, <laughs> uh, what was the re- and uh, what was the reason again? Dalton says, "Don't really understand why the knights have an interest in us." Uh, I think didn't they say something to us about because we talked to him at one point, like that. 
like a broken contract or something? Isn't that what they said? I'll look it up right now. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Ooh. <clears throat> Man. So, Fulton, um, it's it's news to them uh, about that, and so that that's like you can tell that sort of like took them by surprise. They're like, "Oh shit, that's uh, not good." Oh, I didn't. I guess I didn't write it down. So, Cronus and Estelle tell them that um, they, since Dalton has returned to the inn a few days ago, the knights have not returned. But usually, whenever they escort a group of adventurers up to the top of the stairs, they don't actually come all the way across the inn to stay. Um, it's sort of like they're they lift them up and then they're like, good luck in Ardenvul. And then they go back down, right? That sort of thing. So the knights have not been around recently. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, yeah. The, any questions? You, yeah. Do you want to? The one last thing I would like to ask is if we're rewinding is what Dalton's relationship is with the halflings. But I'd like to do it away from the bartender's ears initially. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so Dalton, he's. The halflings, they're a bunch of bastards, as you well know. Uh, for our part, we don't like the toll that they ex ex exact from us, but we're willing to pay. We are desperate, desperate, I might add, to find some other entrance uh, other than the top of the pyramid, which is why they have such power. I would, I would give a lot if I understood exactly what they're planning on, what they're doing down there, other than extorting us. Uh, but, Onwear, my friend, my new friend, I have news for you. Now, if you pay the right price, of course, I might be able to... We discovered things on our retreat from the chasm. You obviously uh, escaped from a different manner, but we we found a way ourselves, a different path out of here. Might be willing to let you in on where that might be, should you be willing uh, to give it a song. Okay, man, we got one. We got one. We got one of our own. Well, what I was going to say is, yes, I heard that, uh, or I intuited that the halflings did not let you back across the chasm. They did not. They'll um, pay for that in the end. And indeed, I would ask uh, if we might come to an arrangement to handle that very issue, should the need arise. Interesting. Open war. I like the way, I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> and, and this is over dinner, right? And he's like, this is once, over dinner. once, once, like, once again on, we I highly suggest that you think about other employment, perhaps with the darlings. <laughs> we may have a I vacancy in the magic user second. department. <laughs> uh, but oh. no, I like the way you're thinking. Uh, we're usually, I, I understand that we're a little bit standoffish. We're rival adventuring parties after probably the same sorts of thing. Fame, fortune, secrets, lore. I'm not wrong in this, am I? Uh, absolutely not. You know, even but. Mitch Jagger and David Bowie did a video together. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that is a obscure reference there, man. Yeah. Strangely enough, yeah, which, more disturbing, which, which David Bowie and Bing Crosby did it. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, adventuring parties often tend to create, uh, to uh, run afoul of the same factions within the dungeon. And, sure. Uh, uh, I do think that there is strength in numbers, and so I'm definitely interested in talking. So before you go back down to the dungeon, let's have a chat about Monsieur Plumthorn, shall we? I shake his hand, I say, uh, uh, indeed, and I'll talk to you about the other exit in the morning. I need some rest. Excellent. Yeah. All right, then you go to bed and you hear all this stuff from Helio Gavilis. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so let's pick it up there. You got a lot of info to digest. Um, I definitely want to talk about over Discord about what we're <clears> going to be doing in Gostowork, and uh, we will, if, if you plan to go there, um, and what the next plans are for the party. And we'll also uh, recapitulate all the XP and leveling up, and so everyone oh. will get a, yep, all that kind of good stuff. Oh, uh, one last <laughs> thing. We'll end it on this. Right at the end, uh, as you wake up the next morning, they will roll for weather and all that kind of stuff. But as you wake up, Avaricios, you definitely do not feel any better at all. You have not healed any hit points, and you are minus one constitution. Ooh. Okay. okay. So what Estelle told you does appear to be true, at least at this point. All right. Um, you will gain the hit points for leveling, but you do not gain the natural hit points for rest. The rest of you do gain one hit point from a good night's rest. Um. Oh, you know what, uh, Matt? I'm wrong. You do gain the hit point from natural rest. So you gain the hit point, but you still lose the con. You lose the con. You okay. lose the con, but you gain the hit point. Okay, so everyone's plus one hit point, including the NPCs. 
Um, and, and the first thing we'll do next session is we will roll for weather. And <clears throat> we'll go from there. All right. Right on. Awesome. Good job, guys. All right. We yeah. got out. Great, great okay. job, man. Excellent job. Huge, okay. huge thing for Mort that session for breaking through that door. Uh, wow. Uh, that was a massive shortcut that I did not think that you were going to be able to make. Um, so that was well done. All right. Good job, Ted. Cool. Phenomenal All right. job, Ted. Uh, you guys have been yeah. watching 3D6 Wait. down the line. What's, what's up, Ted? Well, I was going to say, Mike, who is dead to us, of course, is speaking to us from beyond the grave on our Discord chat. And he was like, are we dead yet? <laughs> oh, we got news for you, Mike. Yes. <laughs> oh, too late. It was too late. I, yeah. I gave him the good news, and he said, oh, that's good. Oh, nice. yeah. that's I think, I think Mike will be... Yeah, I'll tell him I'm kidding. Mike, Mike, Mike will yeah. be very I'm proud sorry, of us. Sorry, TPK? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell him we fell down the chasm, and we have to climb all the way back up. Uh, Mike's, Mike's going to be yeah. very happy, because you, you did it smoothly and uh, with a shortcut, and it was good. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, actually, one last idea. Tell him that I suggested we go into another route, and it opened up into this whole other thing that was really interesting. <laughs> we're actually going that way right yeah. now. We're actually <laughs> further down. Tell, <laughs> tell him David talked us into going that to that uh, portal that was in the cat in the chasm. <laughs> <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> I love it. Thank right. you, John. That was a great session. Yeah, that was very, Everybody very fun. In the comments, don't tell Mike that we didn't. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, you've been watching 3D6 down the line. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and please spread the word. Next week, uh, there will not be an episode because yours truly is going to be at GaryCon. And I know none of you guys are going to fault me for that because it's going to be the shit. So, the, uh, <laughs> You, there will be no new episode next week, but um, I will be up in the birthplace of D&D, up in Lake Geneva. And uh, nice. there will be an episode shortly after that, hopefully. So, everyone, enjoy the time off, and please have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, John.